obviously playing for a small town club. How did how did Barcelona you know, find you? Oh yeah! Two times against mm. against Barca. Mm. Next week, bro, I got a call from FC Barcelona. Yeah. When you get to the Masia, is the academy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The director of, of the academy, he just tells you, um, be ready when you go out. Wow. Yeah. It's like nature. It's like the jungle. Exactly. They just throw you out in there, exactly. and the fittest survives. Yeah, Competition of the year um, dictates what's gonna happen next, and that was the step of I'm not gonna sign pro in FC Barcelona or not. Mm -hmm. Both teams. Puerto Rico attacking again, and they are on the board with an early goal. Jordi Quintilla with a the coach of the second team of FC Barcelona. He came to see to see that tournament, okay. and I just did great, man. The second team coach, he decided, yeah, I want Jordi on my team. Wow. wow. Yeah. I was already prepared to leave Barcelona, but it was just at the last moment of the year. Mm. There was uh, one month with uh, Messi, Dani Alves, wow. and wow. all these guys. Yeah. Wow. I got the chance also to play in, uh, against Bayern Munich, against Pep Guardiola. He changed. That was the year that he changed. It was wow. great. Uh, Of us, we went to Dani Alves and we asked him, Hey, how do, how do you do to, that you can play every game so hard? And he said, Man, I train every day so hard. Any interaction with Messi during, during this month? <laughs> Bro, Messi is really shy, man. Yeah, really yeah. shy. He he said on the pitch, Bien jugado, Jordi. Does he say, Well played, Jordi? Wow. Okay, <laughs> bro, I was the happiest man on earth, man. Uh, we won the Open Cup. We got two penalties against Philadelphia and I scored the last one. The Open Cup goes to Kansas City. He has scored. And Sporting Kansas City have won their third trophy in four years. The coach came to me and said, hey, can you come to my locker room, you know, before training. Then he came and said, you just have to leave. I had a car, I had my really nice apartment, my friends. I wanted to stay there my whole life. And after a week, I was at home. Wow. Back in Spain. Back in Spain, yeah. It's really nice that you asked this because um, it's probably also some some tema difficult to talk about, but it's in our everyday lives. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, and that's, what, that's what I wanted to do here. I want to ask the difficult questions exactly. that people don't talk about. If you want to play for FC Barcelona, Real Madrid, you just have to have What's going on, ladies and gents? Welcome back to the podcast. Today we got our fourth episode in person in Zurich. Today we got a really special guest. We really appreciate his hospitality welcoming us into his home, FC St. Gallen. We got Jordi Quintilla on the podcast. I hope I pronounced that right. Yeah, man, we appreciate it. I really, appreciate really take, appreciate so your much, time. Man. So yeah, if you could just you know introduce yourself, you know your name, where you're from, your age, and then I want to get into your career. You got a special one. Thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate it to be here, man. Thank you for the invitation. I'm Jordi Quintilla. I'm 29 years old. I'm from Barcelona. I was born in Spain and now playing here in St. Gallen for five years already. So, uh, yeah, just looking forward to it. For sure, brother. For sure. Yeah. So if you could just, you know, take us through your journey, you know, when you started, you know, playing football and, and why you got into it. Obviously, we all know Spain is, is a special country for football. And uh, yeah, you know why you got into it, any influence from parents. How did how did you get into the game? Yeah, um, any influence from my parents, my parents and especially my mom wanted me to study, um, me and my brother. So um, I was just doing good in school, man, and um, I was enjoying school until some some friend came up and said, "Hey, why why don't you go to a football club? Mm -hmm. You just register there and um, in our hometown, and then you just try." Yeah. And then I did. I loved it, yeah. and I've been playing football ever since. Wow, and then wow. yeah. My my dad was not playing football at all. My mm -hmm. mom also not. I don't have any influence from my from my family. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I've been enjoying the ride. For sure, for sure. So so, so how old were you when you first uh, yeah. played your first? You know, when did you register for for your first club? So I was uh, six years old. Wow. Yeah. Then I went to, like I said, I went to my hometown club until I was fifteen years old. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then I got signed by FC Barcelona. Mm -hmm. And then I, yeah, my journey is, is, is long. I don't know if you sure. if you come up after with this. Or yeah, no, yeah, we'll get into it, absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, obviously, you know, we all know Spanish footballers are so talented on the ball. Uh, when you, you know, before you started playing, you know, at six in, in a registered club, were you playing on the street at all? Or what was yeah, that? Yeah, I, I was playing in school. Okay. Yeah, um, but it was not uh, not non-organized non football, yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah. It was, I was in, in the playground, you know. Okay, and then okay. thanks to my to my best friend nowadays also, yeah. um, that he, he came with the idea to, okay. to, to register. And then, yeah, it was non-organized football. And then, yeah, but yeah. 
from them from then then, yeah, then yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. And did you did you watch football? Who was your favorite team growing up? It was Barcelona, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. My my dad didn't play, but he was a, a FC Barcelona fan, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, we 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 could also go to the to the football games uh-huh. in the stadium. Uh-huh. So I actually enjoyed a lot to yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to watch this 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 this, this team. And then, yeah, yeah. Um, I've I've been a, a fan yeah, ever since. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who who was your favorite player growing up? Ronaldinho, man. Yeah, he yeah, was yeah, a big yeah, legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, this was the yeah, big big yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big, big, big time player, yeah, and yeah. Um, I think, I think back at the time, we we all played because of Ronaldinho played. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I I love that you bring that up, and and yeah, he just loved the game. He smiled. He had fun doing it, and uh, yeah, I always mention. You know, I've been talking about it in the podcast lately. I personally think you know the the Hispanic players, the Brazilian players, Spanish players, South American players really just have fun playing the game. You know, you can see it in their face, and um, you know, I think you know, obviously not to not to offend other Western Europeans or but you know, personally myself, we're, we're stiffer. You know, and I think if you could find that fluidity, it's huge. And correct me if I'm wrong. Do you think it has to do with like the dance culture, like light on your feet? You know, you have the rhythm, you have the fluidity. That's a good question, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I think um, the co- football culture in in those countries is yeah. so big that we we basically grew up yeah. with a, with a fo- with a football in our feet, yeah. and um, we all play football. We mm-hmm. all play mm-hmm. football. And there's mm-hmm. there's so many million of people playing football yeah. that um, obviously a big percentage of those yeah. will will be professional football yeah. players, yeah. and yeah. and the, they have the. the the teams have so a big um, possibility to choose mm, players yeah, yeah. from the street that obviously every generation mm. in every generation you find so mm. big big players so I would say yes um, it, it, it's it's um, it's a mix of everything but for yeah, sure the, yeah, co- the yeah, culture yeah, of yeah, those absolutely. countries is, uh, yeah, is yeah, um, yeah. The, the point yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely yeah man so obviously playing for a small town club how did how did Barcelona you know, find you yeah. yeah so we were we were uh, competing at the same league okay uh, I remember we, we got relegated that year yeah, um, yeah. and we played both to, uh, we played two times against mm. against Barca mm. and then the second time we played in Barcelona and then my mm. coach came up after losing 7-1 mm. mm. and my coach came up and said hey if I would be the coach from Barcelona, Barcelona I, w- I would take you right yeah, away yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was like ah come on no, no, yeah, 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 you're joking yeah. with me yeah, yeah, yeah. the next week bro I got a call from FC Barcelona yeah, yeah, and yeah. they asked me hey do you want to come over for, wow. for, for your trials wow. just one week you, can, you come you see how it is and then, yeah, and then yeah. we, we decide wow wow yeah I mean obviously you know to get scouted by them is, is a different level but you know, did you get hints from coaches? Did you feel it in yourself that you were a special player, or not at all? Really, not at all. Really? These, um, I think everyone, everyone that it's not professional, not professional today. Yeah, yeah. Every person they think that we, um, we think that we are, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. like big confident yeah, and big, yeah, yeah. Uh, but not at all, man. Yeah, I've, yeah, yeah. I've never thought that I'm, I'm, I'm special or yeah, what, whatsoever. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also. Now that I'm professional, maybe a little bit. Yes, I I, yeah. I, I believe in it. Yes. But when I was 14 years old, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I was I was a I was a normal person, yeah, man. Yeah, I was yeah, a, yeah, yeah. I don't know how to explain, but I I I've never thought that I was I yeah. was gonna make it. Yeah, never. Yeah. I I always had my 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 goal, mm. but I never thought I was gonna make yeah, it. Yeah. So with that being said, when did you realize you wanted to be a, a pro? What age? Did you feel that when I signed to Everson, uh, yeah. to Everson, Barcelona, yeah, yeah. yeah, and then I, I realized, okay, I love this game. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah, this yeah, game. Yeah. I love the passion. I love to compete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really love to do it. And then I, I saw also, I had the opportunity also to train with the second team, with the mm, first team, mm. with 16 years old. Wow, wow. Then, then I, I saw it, man. You, you just see it with yeah. your eyes, and then yeah, you yeah, see yeah. Messi and all these players, and then you say, I just want to be like them. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's just so close, and and you just make a choice, and, yeah, and just yeah. you just go full in. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So after signing, take us through. You know, what what was the next step? Did you? How how far was, was your small town from Barcelona? Did you have to just, move over yeah, there? Yeah, one hour and a half with car. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, right, um, uh, driving mm, car. Mm, mm. Um, so I, I I had to stay there in mm, La Masia. Okay. Yeah, and um, it was uh, just I was just doing from Monday to Sunday. Yeah, yeah, every wow, day of the wow, week. Yeah. Wow. Which uh, in the mornings cool yeah, like every yeah, other yeah, person yeah, yeah, yeah. in the afternoon trainings yeah, yeah, yeah. and then just um, competing in the in the weekends. Wow, yeah. wow! And how was that? That was your first time moving away from home. How how was that uh, transition? 
It was it was it was nice, man. I'm, yeah, not, I'm yeah. not gonna lie. Yeah, 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 yeah. it was nice. I was uh, lo really looking forward to it. I think I think I was uh, mature enough to to make the step. Uh -huh. um, and then I also already knew a couple of players from mm. FC Barcelona okay. that helped me a lot. Okay. Um, for my integration. Okay. And I I really enjoyed it, man. My my first year was 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 big. Was yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was nice. Yeah, yeah. It was also tough because um, the rhythm of the of the play. Especially of the trainings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when you get to FC Barcelona, they tell you, hey, you you're not gonna compete in the weekends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You compete in the week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through the week yeah, against yeah, yeah. the best players in the, basically in, in the world, mm, they say. Mm. Um, but it was nice, man. It yeah, was really yeah, nice. Yeah. I enjoyed a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, I grew up a lot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's interesting, man. So, so, so basically, they were right away telling you that you know, train, you know, training is where you compete, and that's how you earn your spot on the weekend. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Basically, this like the first, the fr actually the first thing they tell you is be ready when you when you when they kick you. Mm, mm. Yeah, be yeah. Be ready yeah. when they suck you. Really. Because um, just um, a little little percentage of, of, of you guys get to wow. the first team, so wow. be ready wow. when you go out. Wow. So that's the, the that, that's thing, the first thing they told this you after you sign. Thing, first thing. Yeah. yeah wow. First thing. Wow. When you get to the Masia is the academy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The director of, of the academy, he just tells you, um, be ready when you go out. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. Wow. Crazy. And and what was your reaction? What were you were like, okay, I just signed. You're probably really hyped and then all of a sudden he's telling you yeah that. this just made me be humble you yeah, know yeah, yeah. and um from the first day i said okay if they kick yeah. me out then it's just not gonna mm, be mm. because i'm not working 100 yeah. percent in trainings yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so absolutely i'm not gonna be i'm not gonna be i'm gonna be humble yeah. i'm gonna yeah. work my my yeah, thing my thing yeah, off yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um and i just did that's awesome yeah i mean dude we were talking you know before this and and you can see you know like Giuseppe said, you know, we appreciate Giuseppe Gentile. Thanks for hooking this up. You know, he's, you know, and we could see it right away. You're a very humble guy. Um, and like you said, you, you've worked for everything that you've, that you've gotten where, where you are, you know, to pave that path, pave that career. And, uh, you know, may, maybe that, do you think that when, when the Barcelona director said that to you, do you think that's what kind of instilled it in your mind where, okay, I got, I got to work every single day to, to, to continue rising, stay here at this level? 100%, uh, bro, yeah, 100%. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I was not a big talent, you know? Mm, mm, mm. I, I was never a big talent. I'm not a big talent, but I, I, I just work a lot. Yeah, 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 and yeah, I yeah. have a lot of discipline. I, I know that we have to have it. I have just have a lot of uh, humility and, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. I just work. Like yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think my persistency and resi resilience took me where I'm where I'm today. Love that. And I, I'm gonna be doing it for for the rest of my football yeah, days. Yeah, I love that yeah. too. Yeah, 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 I say that all the time. How important that is. Yeah. So what and you I, yeah, sorry, I just met so many talents, man, in yeah, my life. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Especially in Barcelona and all yeah, these yeah, yeah. Uh, big teams that I've been. Um, there were so many talents that mm -hmm. nowadays they 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 just don't play football anymore. Yeah. You know and yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And, Back at the time, you thought, yeah, they just will mm. we'll have a great career, mm. and they just don't play anymore. Mm. And only the, the the ones who really worked hard, and, yeah. and you know, yeah. the, only the ones who had this big goal in their head, we are now just professional. Mm. Yeah, that that's very interesting, and that goes back to the point. It's like, is it better in the beginning of your career to be noticed as as a hard worker and not as talented, so you develop th those characteristics, you know, the discipline, the consistency? Because, like you said, you know, I'm sorry, you you've seen many more than I have, but I've seen the same thing. Like, you know, these players are, are taken through the academy, they're praised all the time, and then they lose the work rate because it's like, you know, I I always try to say like you have to own your development. You got to take control in your own hands, own your development. Don't rely on a coach. Don't rely on a parent. Don't rely on your teammates. It's on you. Exactly. You know what I mean? So how did you develop that? I mean, uh, did you feel like at 15, did you have those characteristics? Or? I did, yeah, I did. As, I, I think, as I said, I was not a big talent and my confidence was not so, so high that I had to match it with my, with my work ethic. Mm, 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 uh, you mm. know what I mean? And, and that's what took me to, to, uh, to really work every day. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I still have, now I'm 29, bro, and, and every day in my mind, I, 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 I start over from from zero. Yeah, yeah. And every yeah. training, I start from zero, and, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. everywhere I've been, and 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 this this it, this helped me to yeah, to, yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to to uh, to where I'm today. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. So you know, talked about all that. So can you take us in? You know, paint us the picture how it looked. You know, for, first year at the. La, how do you say it? La Masia. La Masia. La Masia. La Masia. La Masia. La Masia. Okay. How did the first year look? 
Um, the first year was amazing. Um, I had a big, um, big players also in my spot uh -huh. because I I was playing at the time um, offensive midfielder, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. Barca takes every year the mm. best in the world mm. in that position. Mm, mm, so mm -hmm. it was uh, it was hard, but I wow. I learned a lot yeah, yeah, yeah. from the best player actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so actually, my second year in Barca was uh, was not gonna be nice okay. because the coach already told me, hey. You know, yeah, maybe yeah, you don't yeah. play as much. Yeah, yeah. You just have you just have to work. And mm. I said, okay, yeah, no problem. Well, I just wanted to stay there. Yeah. Um, and I was not professional at the time, not okay, yet. Okay. I was 16, and then I said, okay, yeah, no problem. That's what I'm here for. I, mm. I love challenges. Mm, mm. Um, and I just took it over, and then mm. I end up playing a lot of a lot of mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, having a lot of mm -hmm, minutes mm -hmm, on the field. Mm -hmm. And again, I was not the best talent. And then when I had to sign pro. Mm, mm. The coach of uh, the second team came over to me and said, "Yeah, um, you just don't have a spot." Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. this was in in December, and we finished the season in 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 June. Wow! wow. And I said, "Yeah, okay, next challenge, no?" Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And I just I just also took it, and then the next six six months, I was uh, I was uh, I would say yeah, I was a machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> because when the coach came to me and said, "Yeah, you're not gonna play. Mm. Or you're not gonna get a you're not gonna get a, mm. get a, a pro contract." I was like, no way, man! I yeah, want yeah. this, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I just did it. Yeah, yeah. That's when you got into that dog mentality. Yeah, 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 man. So take us through, like, you know, obviously you said first year you did really well. You learned a lot. What were some of the biggest takeaways from from the first year of being there? Yeah. So my my biggest takeaway is I I was um I was competing against my my best friend in the team, and yeah. and, and this was the hardest thing for it's me. Not easy. Yeah, hardest thing yeah, because yeah. Uh, it was either him or me. Yeah. And there is when I learned, okay, you can just be a good person and, and but just still competing from, from what you want. Yeah, yeah. And and that year that's what I learned the most. And he was he was at the time in my team, he was a big player. Yeah, yeah, big player. Yeah, yeah. And then he just came one one day to me and he said, Hey, congratulations man, you you, you are doing great wow, and, wow, and wow. you are playing more than me and yeah. and I maybe have to go next year. Wow, and wow. and he had to go. Yeah. Wow. And this um, this hurt me a lot, and I, actually, this is what I learned the most from yeah. that year. Just be humble, man. You can of course. you can have setbacks every year. So, of course, um, yeah, of course, just, just, of course. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, honestly, at that age, for him to come up to you and say that, obviously, he's very mature in yeah. himself. And you know, I, I think you know, on the pitch, the goal is you know just to do the best you can, work the hardest you can. You know, maybe. You, you and your buddy are competing, your enemies on the pitch, but off the field you you, you know you exactly. shake hands and you're boys yeah, again. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But this was really difficult because yeah. he was a uh, he was there for already for eight years. Uh -huh. And wow. he yeah, wow. yeah. He knew everything. He was the, 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 the kid of La Masia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was coming new and then yeah, yeah. I was um I I had a hard time man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then, as I said, yeah, I'm, I I just did my job and and I just worked from for what I want. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. So you know, you said you, you learned a lot from from other players. Any did did any players you know come up to you? Were, were they welcoming? Uh, any 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 tips they gave you? Because obviously, you know, very coming into La Masia. I hope I said that right. <laughs> and it's you know, it's a uh, high pressure. You know, yeah. a lot of stress, and uh, like like you said from the beginning of the conversation, your favorite player was Ronaldinho, mm -hmm. and you know, you see he plays stress free, but obviously we all get nerves. You know, I don't know if he had nerves, probably too much drinking. <laughs> but uh, you know, any any tips? You know, from from older players oh, or p players who's been from, there from older players? Yes, from, yeah. not from my team. Um, from my team, no tips at all. Well, yeah, well, this well, was uh, well. the war. This wow. was the war, yeah. Really. So, so how was that environment? Was it a war? It was going really in difficult. Yeah, yeah, it was really difficult. Actually, from that from that team, I don't have. I, I just have a relationship with my with my friend wow. nowadays. Wow. Is still my friend and, wow. and no one else. Wow. So I think I think this was a um, when 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 someone signed for for FC Barcelona it was uh, it was the war, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the war. Yeah, Nobody yeah. came to you and just helped you and say, yeah, hey. Yeah. Um, why don't you do this on the field? Do this yeah, on the field? Yeah, no, no, yeah. no way, bro. Yeah, you yeah. just have to learn yeah. from yourself. Yeah. Um, and just go through it. <laughs> yeah, real wake up call, man. Yeah, real yeah. wake no, up. No, really call. crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, if you could just maybe take take our audience through what a day in the life, you know, at, at 15 years old at Barcelona looks like, just to show the intensity. Um, you know, just if you could describe it a little bit, yeah. how it looks. I, I think I think it was not it was not different that we that that. A person not from Barcelona can do like we mm. were waking up like at, I think at six forty-five. Then at eight we started um, school mm. until one, 
then we went back to La Masia and then we we were we were we went to a normal college mm. not normal school mm. like with 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 normal people yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, like not 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 athletes yeah 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 um so with a bus yeah, yeah. from La Masia to the school then yeah. from the school to La Masia then we we ate lunch in La Masia yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. and then in the afternoon we just trained and, and, mm. and the trainings were just so hard but yeah otherwise it was it was like a normal day yeah, in, in yeah, normal yeah. life yeah. yeah yeah that's what i wanted to ask you how did you know how did the trainings feel obviously adapting from your your smaller club going there was it a wake up call stepping onto the pitch what was the difference you know what did you feel yeah, it was much faster yeah, it was yeah, much yeah. faster but but i i was ready to i was ready for it because mm. i think i think also what one of my um one of my um best things that I have in on the pitches that my, my mind mm. works fast and, and my integration was not difficult at that mm. point but my physicality was not was I was not ready yeah I was yeah, still yeah. not ready I was like really thin like I'm, I'm now but like with the 20 centimeters yeah, 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 less yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I just I just had to work really hard physically because wow. they were really machines mm, they mm. were working um, for a long time already in Barcelona yeah, yeah. physically yeah in my hometown we didn't do anything yeah, physically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just um, I just had to to step up. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think you bring up a really good point. Uh, you know, I think you know we see players like Xavi, Iniesta, you know, Messi. They're not the, the most physical players, Busquets, mm -hmm. but their brain is, is, is different level. You know, they, they know the right decision. It's all about decision making. So obviously, coming from a smaller club, how did you how did you develop that 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 uh, mentality, that ability to make the right decisions? Um, we work a lot in Barcelona to do this. Mm, yeah, mm. they they just teach you every single day how to do this. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. And and there's so that the game plan is so specific in Barca that actually you know exactly what you have to do every wow, every wow. single time when you got the ball. Yeah, yeah. What they when they what they tell you also is that when you go up from when you go out from Barcelona, it's just a different different yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. it's also it's really difficult to adapt your game. Mm. Um, from what you have been doing in Barcelona mm, the last years mm. and going to a new club, wow. this is the most difficult thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, really wow. difficult thing. Yeah. So probably Xavi and Iniesta, they were really big players, but probably yeah. if they would have played in I don't know in FC San Gallen, they would have been really good, but yeah, not yeah, that yeah, not yeah. that much. For sure, definitely not that That's much. Unbelievable. So what are, what exactly are they doing? To you know, uh, is it uh, do they implement you know the theoretical? Do they show you on film game analysis and then try to implement into practice? What type of things are they doing to, to improve that decision making? They do everything they can, man. Um, they do everything they can, like yeah. video analysis. They 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 do um, individual video analysis mm. already with mm. fourteen years old. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. And then also on the pitch, they do a lot of uh, small sided games, mm. small possession ball games, yeah, and yeah, yeah. everything so like small and and with one two touches. Mm. You cannot mm. do three touches. Um, and basically, yeah, because FC Barcelona, he they want to really like play. Um, in really small dimensions of, mm, of mm. On, on the field, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, that's what we what we train for. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's unreal, man. So you know, how were the coaches? Were they were they welcoming to you? Were they, you know, friendly? How how did they treat you coming in? <laughs> Good question, man. Yeah, yeah. They they were not friend. From my point of view, they were not friendly. They yeah, just yeah. were friendly with the ones that played. Yeah, yeah. Um, business is business. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it's like yeah. this. I yeah. also say football is business, man, yeah. or e every sport is business. And then if you are good and if you play, they like you. Mm. If you don't play, then just they don't like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like this. Yeah, yeah. I think if, if we understand it, it's okay. You go, sure. you just go with the flow. If you, sure. if you don't understand it, then you have a problem. For sure, for sure. So in, in Barcelona, I also learned this my, my first year. Yeah, um, yeah. I started not playing a lot, but mm. then I, I, I ended up playing a lot. And then mm. I also saw the, the change of my yeah. coach with yeah, me. Yeah, 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 that's very interesting. His approach and, yeah. and, and then, yeah, man, I didn't have any help, I would say, from the coach. Yeah, only, yeah, yeah. Just only to, to understand my game, but not yeah. to feel good. For sure, yeah. for sure. How about the teammates? I mean, obviously, they had, a, they had high standards. Uh, I get the question all the time from younger players, you know, uh, what, what do I do if my teammate yells at me? How was that? You know, were teammates yelling at you? How did you react? What was the interaction there? Well, it's really, really difficult because yeah. I was not. I don't like to argue on the pitch, yeah, especially yeah, yeah. with with anyone on the pitch and off the pitch. I don't like it. Mm. I don't feel good. Um, but sometimes you have to step up and you have to you have to really argue with your teammate if you don't find that his opinion is is your opinion. You know, mm, and then mm. maybe you have another point of view, and then. And then you just you just argue and mm. obviously there's a lot of uh, nerves there's a lot yeah. of uh, pressure yeah. there's yeah. a lot of uh, 
things going on, like yeah. a lot of challenges in, in yeah. specific, specifically in FC Barcelona that I just had to, I just had to, to, to go back and forth. And then if they argue with me, then I, sorry, but I have to do it enough if I don't see your point, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then I remember, man, this was my first year of my life where I, where I had uh, arguments on the pitch. Wow, uh, wow. Yeah. And this, I didn't like it at all. I, ha sure. I hate it. I sure. still hate it. For sure. No, I feel But you. sometimes, sometimes you just have to do it. Yeah. It actually leads me to a good point. It's like, it's like if you're in school, you know, you're in, you're in elementary, middle school or high school, maybe, maybe you get bullied and the bully is going to come up to you and, and they're going to try to bully you. And if you back down and you, you go into your shell, they're just going to keep exactly. coming. But if you stand up to that bully, exactly. you're like, wow, I respect this kid. Exactly. Do you feel like it's the same exactly. on the pitch? It's yeah. exactly the same yeah. thing. Yeah. It's exactly yeah. the same thing. And then when you, when you step up, the other is going to respect you. you yeah, know? yeah. And exactly. All, and when you always go with, the, with respect, they're just gonna respect yeah, you yeah, because yeah. you you just you just have an argument with with your teammate. Yeah, yeah. Both you want to win. Yeah. And just um you know you, you just go in the same direction and yeah, then if yeah. you if you have a, also a good point the other one is gonna is gonna listen mm, to you. Mm. If he doesn't listen to you then it's his problem. Mm. But you just you just do the best that you can in mm. order to win the game. Absolutely, you absolutely. Know? Yeah, I mean you know what it sounds like to me is like you've been describing it's like it's like nature. It's like the jungle. Exactly. They just throw you out in there, exactly. and the, the fittest survives. This is it, bro. Yeah, this yeah. is it. Yeah. This is it. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And um, yeah, man. As as you said, in school also, it's, it's exactly the same. If you back down, if you're scared, um, bro, um, then you can have problems. But if you go with respect to the other one, and then you you just you just put your points on the table, and then you just discuss, mm, then probably mm, you're gonna mm. get the same point. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, man. So yeah, could you take us through? So after you were told by by the coach, you know that uh, you don't have the spot. What what was the next uh, next step there? Um, next step, second year, you mean? Yeah. Bro, second year it was also good. Um, at the beginning it was really difficult for me because, yeah. the, as you said, the coach told me, yeah, maybe you don't you don't have yeah, the spot yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and all these things. Um, but I think my my whole life I've been challenged by by coaches and mm. also my teammates mm. with their talent yeah yeah and they've yeah. been challenging me challenging me um in a way that i had to always step up as i said i was not the best i was never i've been never the best of my team never mm, mm. I, I was not the big talent and and this helped me in order to every year to just keep improving keep improving yeah, keep yeah, improving yeah, and then yeah. when i got the chance just just give everything mm. and if you do this then it's it's gonna be positive for you for man. sure do you look back and are you kind of thankful for that? Because like you said in the beginning, you know, you came from a small club. Uh, you didn't think you were the most talented. You weren't uh, as physically gifted. So you had to work that much harder. Do you, are you grateful for that? That, that you were, you know, kind of an underdog in a sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. And uh, <laughs> I think from the last year that I was playing my hometown, I was already... Um, I was already scouted by Real Madrid and FC Barcelona, wow, wow. Espanol, like yeah, some of the yeah. biggest clubs in, in Spain. Mm. And they told me this. They told me, hey, um, we, we don't want you because you're not physically enough um, mm. good mm. or prepared. Yeah, yeah. And bro, I remember in school, I was, uh, I was in school in my class and I was doing, you know, exercises while the yeah. teacher was, 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 say, was um, like in the lesson. Yeah, I yeah, was yeah. like doing exercises yeah, yeah. with my legs in yeah, order yeah, yeah. To, to, to make yeah, my, yeah, my yeah, legs yeah, bigger, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. What did your parents think about this? They wanted you to do well in school, huh? Bro, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know this. Uh, <laughs> they didn't know uh, this. Uh, but it was, sure. uh, no, it was nice and, and, and yeah, I'm thankful about that. Yeah, I'm yeah. thankful that I, that, I, that I got so, met, so, much, um, so much inputs about, sure. yeah, you have to do this, you have to do this if you want to go there. Mm, and I, did, mm. I just did it, man. That's awesome. Yeah, so it sounds like, you know, you obviously use that dark side motivation as fuel. Yeah. So, so after that second year, can can you take us on on the next next step? Yeah, the then um, the second year it was uh, it was long because we played a lot of competitions. Mm. Um, we didn't win the league, so it was a big disappointment for for the team and the club. Mm. Um, we got beaten um, from uh, Real Madrid in mm. the last competition of the year, and this actually the last competition of the year um, dictates what's gonna happen next mm. all the time. Like mm -hmm, you, you mm -hmm. probably you don't play. As, as, as good mm. during the season but the last tournament is what it counts mm. and that was the step of okay am I gonna be a, am I gonna sign pro in FC Barcelona or not mm -hmm. and I just knew that this last competition was uh, it was the, the time mm. that I had to step up mm -hmm. and then I was not starting at the point at that time mm. 
Um, but every time I was coming in, I was really competing mm -hmm. full gas, mm -hmm. full mm -hmm. gas. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the coach of the second team of FC Barcelona, he came to see to see that tournament. Okay. And I just did great, man. And then I was not on the squad during the season. I was yeah. not in the in the in the second team squad for mm -hmm. next year's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the coach, uh, second team coach, he decided, yeah, jo I want Jordi on my team. Wow. wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, it was crazy. And I was already prepared to leave Barcelona. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was just at the right at the. The last moment of the year mm. where my agent came and said hey you, do you want to sign pro in FC Barcelona because wow. you you I, we got an offer wow wow yeah, wow. yeah I mean I, I got two questions I mean I, I think you know number one is you know how does it feel like it, at Barcelona to to get a loss you know how is it mentally how do the players treat it from an emotional standpoint <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. You can find the app on rickfitacademy.com. And then, you know, that second one is when you're not playing, when you're not doing your best on the pitch or you are doing your best in training, but you're not giving, being given the reward of playing time. How do you deal with that? So, yeah, let's go number one. Like, how is it at FC Barcelona to, to lose? Um, as a team, it's really bad yeah, because yeah. Uh, then you have the coach and then the then you then the president probably comes then mm -hmm. the sport chef probably comes yeah yeah and you know they just yeah. um, they just tell you hey um you just got beaten um against the the, the, the opponent and yeah, yeah. real madrid or espanol at the time was in a team in in, in spain mm. in catalonia next to mm -hmm, barcelona mm -hmm. and this hurts man this yeah, hurts yeah, because yeah. you are supposed to win everything yeah, and yeah, every yeah. time and every game and and when you lose you are just like a re they treat you bad like yeah. like hey you lost just you just lost you you're not good enough you're not good enough man and and you you don't you don't earn the spot in in the in a professional team in FC Barcelona then you just have to leave and i remember mm -hmm. only from that from that team we only signed uh, two people professional wow. two players wow. two wow. players from all the talents that we had mm. just two players signed professional mm. you was, you and who else me and patrick gavarron he's okay. now in lazio okay he plays in lazio okay. nowadays yeah he's yeah. been playing since uh, he since he left fc barcelona in lazio wow. yeah wow. big player um we just both of us man yeah, and it was crazy wow. yeah, it was crazy Incredible. so from um, from emotionally yeah from from the from your coaches and from the president and from the club um generally you're treated really bad when you lose mm. yeah mm -hmm. from your teammates also Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because your teammates also want to win and when you don't do good um you just um, you just have to deal with it and mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we talked we talked before um you probably just get screamed on the field mm -hmm, mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. your teammate and it's not nice mm -hmm. to, to 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 get so and then you just have to deal with it for sure, yeah. for sure. if you're not ready then you you will not be professional football if you're not capable of of listening to it and and you know and 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 giving a response um, you just not not gonna be a professional football player. From my point of view, yeah. you just have to be ready to to deal with every situation. Yeah, that, that that's very well said. I mean, yeah, I mean it's the, the ability to take criticism and act on exactly. it. You know, exactly. yeah, and, and it's yeah. That's why I always try to say, you know, the goal is to be completely honest with yourself. Yeah. Look yourself in the mirror. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? And be able to take that criticism and like you've you know, done, and I'm sure continue to do, is when someone takes, these, you know, gives you that criticism, you don't internalize it and take it offensively, you say, you know what, I'm going to prove this guy wrong. I'm going to get better here. I'm going to get better there. So that's, that's massive, bro. I think, I think every people, not just athletes, have to love criticism. Also, when your wife comes and says, hey, I don't like this from you. Can you change yeah, these? I yeah. would like to just, just take it positively. Yeah, man. Yeah, and, yeah. and in football and in sports, um, you just get criticism every single day, yeah, every single yeah, day from yeah. your coach, from your teammates. You're just not, you're just not, the, you're just not, you're not Leo Messi, man. You're yeah. not the best player in the world. So you, you're just going to make mistakes. And, and if you're able to take these mistakes and just work on them and improve, then mm, you're going to, mm. you, you can be big. You For can sure. be big. Just sure. inside of you, I, just, I, I love what you said. Like, you have to be honest to yourself. If you are, then you have a big chance to, mm, to, mm. to, to, uh, to get what you want. Yeah, I love it, bro. I love it. So obviously, you know, uh, lots of pressure on yourself to, you know, if you lose, if you don't play poorly. How did you How did you deal with that pressure going into games? Did you, 
Did you have any any routines that they taught you? Anything that you developed? How did you oh, deal I, with I that? I love question? these questions because um, I had a hard time at the beginning yeah, yeah, yeah. because um, I was not ready to I was not I wasn't ready to to deal with all of these things. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. we at the time there's a there's a psychologue. How do you say it in English? Psychologue. Psychology. 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 Yeah. 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 You, you you have one person that can help you but you just don't want to go there because mm. you know that maybe you know they talk behind with the coach exactly exactly um i didn't go to this person but i had so i had to do it i had to deal with, my, with mm-hmm. myself mm-hmm. and at the mm-hmm. beginning it was really hard because mm-hmm. um i was not playing good i was not um finding my spot in the mm-hmm. team mm-hmm. i knew it this was mm-hmm. the hard thing that i knew it yeah 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 but I, I, I said, yeah, look, um, just, just keep working in trainings, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just keep, just keep doing everything in trainings that anyone can tell, can tell you, Jordi, you are not doing enough, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, I just did it, and then at some point, it just comes with the flow. Yeah, like yeah, at, yeah. at some point, you just feel better. Your teammates also respect you mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. I think if your teammates see you, that you are just professional and doing everything what you can and, yeah. and what's on your hand. They just respect you also off and on the field. I love that. And um, yeah, yeah. and when you do that, um, yeah, just have a great chance to improve yourself. And mm-hmm. I, that's what I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's really well said and a point I want to touch on. I think nowadays sometimes in culture, people like look at people doing extras as like, oh, yeah, make fun of him or this and that. At the end of the day, the people, like you said, who are going to do those things, they develop those characteristics to sign professionally. They respect the guys who work hard, yeah. you know, and the guys who are jealous and don't want to work as hard. They're the ones talking behind yeah. behind others' backs to try to put you down, you know, whether it's to the coach, whether it's to the well, whoever it is. They want to do that because they're soft and they don't want they can't work as hard. They can't be as disciplined because yeah. at the end of the day, it's hard to be disciplined. Exactly. So, you know, I, I completely agree with your point. And to all to listeners, all the listeners, I think it's you know just. Keep being a professional on and off the pitch, and the right people will see it. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. That that's what happened to me actually. Um, the the second coach of, of the second team in Barcelona, the, he he saw it. Exactly. He, he saw exactly. how how I loved the, the 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 game. He saw how I lifted. He saw obviously my whole these disapp- um, my whole development during the season. Mm. Like I started not playing, but I end up playing. At the, I end up um, doing good. Mm-hmm, he, mm-hmm, he saw this mm-hmm, development, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and he he said, "Hey, I want to work with this guy, man. Yeah. Like offer him a, a professional contract." And just because that. of this, yeah. yeah, just because of this. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 just incredible because you know they always they always say it's the quote of working in the dark. Yeah, work, work when no one sees you. Yeah. you know. Yeah, and the right people yes. will see you yes. and they'll respect it. Honestly. And yeah, I love that man because you know, ambitious people want to work with ambitious people yeah. because that's that's what builds things. Yeah. You know. And 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 this happened to me in FC Barcelona. It's, it didn't happen to me in a small club in, yeah. in my yeah. hometown. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was FC Barcelona, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and the coach, it was Eusebio. He was he had been a, a big big yeah, time player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he saw that man, and 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 he saw my 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 work ethic. He saw how I worked. He saw how I loved this game, and, mm-hmm. and he just wanted to work with me. Mm, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, man. So, so what type of stuff were you doing? Were you doing? You know, how how were you treating yourself? How did you? Um, find the, those right routines, those right habits, because you know I'm sure you agree. It's it's those little small details yeah. that. Exactly. And it, it, as you say, it's not a big thing. It's just like doing, just doing more than, than the others. Mm, you just have mm. to do a prevention. Probably before every training, you go to the gym. You do a prevention stuff. You do a little bit of strength stuff before the training. Then you go to train. You work as much as you mm. can. You run and you work as much as you can. Then after training, you just go again to the gym. Mm, mm, where, mm. Every, where everybody goes home because he's tired and because he... He or she, he, he, they don't want to work anymore. You just go to the gym and do your things, man. Exactly. You just go to the Love physio. They, you just ask for for a massage. You just go to, you just do an ice bath. You just do whatever you can in order to be on the weekends as much fit as possible. And dude, I love that, yeah. bro. You, your teammates see that, and yeah, the coach yeah. sees that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The coach sees that. Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's awesome, and it's like, I always try to say, like, do the thi- do the little things. When you don't want to do them, when you don't want to do something, you know you need to. That's when you gotta push that because, you know, the brain's a muscle. Yeah. When when you don't want to do it, it's it's your brain, it's your it's your inner. Yeah. Cut that out. It's your inner that. That is telling you, you know, you're tired. But if if you push past that, you continue yeah. to develop. Yeah. So I I also I also have a, a good experience with this that that at the beginning I was I was not like this. Mm. But then as I signed as I as I went to Barcelona I, I and I 
told my, to myself, hey, you just have, have to do it. At the beginning, it, it was hard, man. Yeah. It was hard. Yeah. I was not used to do it. But I just, I just went, I just went through it, and and at some point you just do it automatically, mm. and um, mm. this discipline you you just build it up, and um, it's not that ah now I'm disciplined now I'm not no no the discipline just comes, and at one point you are just so disciplined that you, you just do it automatically, yeah. and it just you you enjoy to do it, you enjoy yeah. to do it, yeah. yeah, it's a lifestyle. It becomes exactly. it becomes addicting, you know what? Because like you do that discipline, you do all those right right routines, you do those right habits. It affects you physically, but even more importantly, affect it helps you mentally. Yeah. And then you get that positive momentum, and then you start seeing the results. Yeah. And then it's like, wow, this becomes addicting. I'm not stopping yeah. and this. And I, I love, I love yeah. to do it. Yeah. And then yeah, and I think mentally, um, I, I love to talk about mental stuff. Same, and, same. Um, and um, the discipline helps you to be mentally stronger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. I was never a mentally strong player yeah. until I was disciplined, and I, I, I do, I did everything in order to improve myself. And then mentally, I was I was stronger, much stronger. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. Absolutely, unbelievable. I mean, so so much value for the listeners. It's, you know, something I talk about all the time. But coming from a guy like you, in, in the environments you played in and continue to play in, I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. So if you could just take us on, you know, after uh, signing professionally, what what was the next? Now comes now comes the bumpy road, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I signed professionally in FC Barcelona. I um, we were in second division in Spain. Mm. Um, the level was so hard, it was mm. so hard and so high. And we that year we finished third mm. in the second league, mm. uh, Spanish league. And I didn't play any single minute, mm. zero minutes, wow. Wow. zero minutes. And the next season, preseason, no, 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 I'm lying. No, no, I played the first six months. Yeah. With FC, with the second team, which I didn't play any minute. And in January, the coach, which signed me pro, came mm. and said, Jordi, if you want to have minutes, here is not the place. You just have to go on loan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I wanted, I wanted to go. I wanted yeah, to go and yeah. I said, yeah, just, let's do it. Um, mm. And I went this, the next six, six months on loan to the third division, third tire in Spain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, we just got, we just um, um, almost got relegated in third division in Spain and then that was also a hard time because I was from FC Barcelona to a to a to a team where I it was my first time sharing locker room with with older people mm-hmm, like mm-hmm, much much older mm-hmm, people mm-hmm. Um, and people that that earn their money to feed their families you know mm-hmm, this was also oof, mm-hmm, big change mm-hmm, in my life yeah, yeah. Um, and that was that was my first pro year man wow, really difficult wow. I think I played in one year three games mm. Mm. Three well, games well, in one well. year, yeah, really bad. Yeah, unbelievable. So yeah, let's let's take us back to to you know playing for the for Barca, you know second uh, in the second tier of Barcelona. W- you know, what did you feel? Were you able to to take a step back and and look you know at the players that were playing ahead of you? What did you feel like you were missing? Talent. Huh. Yeah, I think there's there's a point where the talent is just not not there anymore, and um, I think from that team. Everyone is playing big, big uh, in big teams right now. Who, yeah. who, who are those guys you're um, playing with? Deo Lufeo is playing in Italy Serie A. Luis Alberto is playing in Lazio um, Serie A. Um, Javi Spinoza he played in first division the next year. Um, everyone, bro, yeah, like yeah, uh, yeah. the whole def- the whole starting defense is playing now Champions League. Wow. Like, like this was yeah, yeah, yeah. this was uh, yeah, this yeah, was big yeah. time. The, the, this team was amazing. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. team was amazing, and the talent was there. Wow, yeah, wow, yeah, wow. The talent was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, just the coaches said, yeah, Jordi, look, I love you to be here, but uh, maybe if you want to play, uh, and you have to play for your development, then exactly. you just have to go. And mm-hmm. I said, yeah, look, mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. I understand the situation. I will go. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So like you said, you know, going into this club third tier, how was it going into the locker room? What did you feel? You know, um, was it a similar mar- uh, mindset at like La Masia, or was it uh, was it worse? You know, like you said, you know. These guys are, are, are playing the game. They're getting their bonuses. If you don't help them win games, they're, maybe their you know family doesn't eat. So how how was yeah. that? That was difficult, man. I had to change my mindset because I, I I just came with my you know my new car, brand new from FC Barcelona. Yeah. You know I thought I was a I was a really good player, but then I saw the real football. Mm, mm. I saw that that was the real football when you when you share locker rooms with the older people. With all, with people that really they just earn their money to feed their families. It's mm, just like mm, this, and mm. then you just see they're they're the real professional football. Mm. 
and then um, and then it was hard, man. At the beginning, I didn't play. I came with a lot of motivation, but um, always to come on loan in a new team, it's difficult yeah. because their team is already built up. So, um, but I, I had my chance, I had my opportunity, but I, I didn't take it, man. Mm. I didn't mm. take it, mm. and then and then I just, I, I just didn't play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the coach just took the older ones to to save to save his position yes. because, as I said, we almost got relegated. And then that year, I remember I saw also a little bit of corruption mm. so yeah if you want to go over it maybe we can this is also interesting yeah but i i saw so many things that it yeah, yeah, also yeah, yeah. taught me a lot of things man yeah yeah i mean if, if you don't mind going into that you know that that would be fantastic uh because you know i think a lot of the listeners they see things and that's why i have this podcast yeah. i want to dive into the minds like yourself they see things from the surface, you yeah. know, they, they see, you know, Benzema with his Rolex, his Ferrari and stuff, <laughs> but they, they don't know the bumpy journey. They don't know the possible corruption. So, uh, yeah, if you, if you don't mind, you know, so talking it, about that. It was, it was the last two games and we, we were already safe. And then a, a, a captain of the team just came, came over to us and said, Hey, look, if, um, if you let yourself win, if you lose, then we got a bonus for you. Wow. Yeah, wow. it was crazy, and and this this nowadays and and back at the time this is like corruption, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was I was scared. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. was really scared. And then the captain came to us and said, "Hey, look, guys, this opportunity just came to us." Yeah. The coaches were not there; they yeah. didn't know anything. Yeah. Yeah. And they, he just asked us, "Hey, what do you want to do?" You yeah. know. Yeah. And I was like, there, you know, I was 18 years old, and then yeah, yeah. and then people, 30, 31, 33 yeah, years yeah, old, yeah. they started talking, you know, and then. At the end, we didn't take the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. No, it was not an opportunity. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we didn't take it. The we didn't yeah. take it. Which today I, I I'm really thankful about it. Yeah. Um, because it, it could have been bad. Mm, yeah. Mm. Very yeah. interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, man. So you know, I see after after the third, you know, with this club, you moved to made made a move to France. Yes. But first, there's a preseason with the first team. Okay. This was also nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry so, yeah. if I'm if I'm talking too no, much, but <laughs> no, bro, this is, this is your podcast, man. So, so yeah, take yeah, us back. I, how did, how did I that came back, exactly? I came back from the first um, from from the loan, mm. and then that that summer I was ready to go again, man, in in, in FC Barcelona, and then I how old were you at the time? I was nineteen. I was eighteen. 18. I was still eighteen, and then I um, I remember that a lot of a lot of um, young players. They just went every preseason with the first team mm, a, mm, a lot. Mm, mm. Then I, I, I was it was an opportunity in front of my eyes. Yeah. And then I, I started the trainings really good. Mm. I prepared this off season. I prepared myself a lot physically. And then the the coach just came one day and then and then he said, hey, um, you go with the preseason the preseason with the first team, man. Wow, wow. Yeah. And uh, it was uh, one month with uh, Messi, Dani Alves, wow, and wow, wow. all these guys. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Wow. I got the chance also to play in in. Um, uh, against Bayern Munich, Bayern wow. München, yeah, uh -huh. in Germany, um, against Pep Guardiola, he changed. That was the year that he changed. Ah, it was amazing, man. It was oh, crazy. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, so take us through that. Take, you know, um, how was that training with those guys? What was the what was the mindset? What was the level? What was the standard they were holding you to? Yeah, it was everything so perfect. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It, it seemed to my eyes, it seemed everything so perfect. You know, these guys, they didn't lose a ball. They were all the time. You know. Um, working a lot mm. i remember we we went a couple of us we went to danny alves mm -hmm, and we mm -hmm. asked him hey how do, how do you do to 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 that you can play every game so hard mm. then he said man i train every day so hard mm. and and all this this also helped me to say yeah okay if danny alves does it danny alves is doing it um i have to do it also yeah. and last yeah. season they just won the champions league and danny alves he was this preseason already training like crazy yeah, yeah, yeah like crazy yeah, yeah. You, you you could have said yeah danny Come on, don't don't just don't work so much. Yeah, yeah. And no, no, man. He was he wanted to be great, and he he he's great nowadays, man. Yeah, he just yeah. became great. Yeah. Well, and and how was how was the mentality on the pitch? You know, <sighs> I standard. Think, yeah, I, I I think these guys were so calm, and they they were so confident about their game that mm. they just they just knew that they were gonna play good. You know, and yeah, and, yeah. and this is also. If you if you want to play for FC Barcelona, Real Madrid, mm. you just have to have this, this kind of mentality that, that the, the confidence, it's, it's just there, man. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And those in those teams, the confidence and the and the and the talent they just match so good that, that, that they just win Champions League so easy. They play just World Cups mm, and they mm. and they do it for a long time mm, in their clubs. Mm. And you you believe that self confidence can be you know 
developed or is it is it is it the environment oh, they're in? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I, I I did I did man. Yeah. I've 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 been working um, already six years with a with a with a psycholog. Um, nice. Yeah. Um, and this helped me a lot, man. Mm. And I, I would also recommend um, everyone, mm. not just mm. athletes, mm. to to work on this because I think me the mental aspect is this. For me, it's the ninety percent of yeah, the game yeah, is yeah, my, yeah. my mind. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that. And I was just talking uh, to my one-on-one -on -one client. He's eighteen. You know, we've been working with a lot of gym work and and stuff like that. And you know, as I've gotten older, obviously the gym is very important, and 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 doing the extra work is very important. But I think the most important is the mind, the mindset. Mm -hmm. Can you become under pressure? Can you be relaxed? Because I think that's what allows you to play your best football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. This, this, this helped me also a lot to to nowadays yeah. um, have the confidence enough that I'm gonna step up on the field and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be good. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, I'm not gonna be influenced by the fans or my mm, teammates or mm. my or the, the players that I played against. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, it's just me with me and yeah. me against me. And, yeah, and yeah, yeah. if I get to control myself, yeah, I get yeah. to control the, the whole game. Yeah, yeah, that's unbelievable. Yeah. So just for, just for the listeners, and I love giving practical advice, you know, what type of things are you doing? You don't have to go super in depth, but any type of, uh, you know, uh, trick, I don't even like that word, tricks, hacks, any type of breath work or meditation, yoga. What are you incorporating? What is what is your psychologist helping you with? I'm I'm meditating every day. Love it. I love every it. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every I can day. see. I, yeah. I, I right when I walked in the door, I was like this guy's yes. a calm guy. You could feel it. You know. Yes. You every feel day. the energy. Yeah. Every day I do ten minutes, not more. I just I just need ten minutes mm, every day mm, when I mm. wake up. I just drink water, two glasses of water, and then I meditate. Nice. I nice. have a, a nice, a great video in YouTube. I just need that. I have yeah. a great video in YouTube. Put just my AirPods, nice. ten minutes breathing, and nice. then I I just feel so happy and, and and this helps me to go through the day. Absolutely. And um, yeah, 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 this yeah. this is just I incorporated this for a long time already, yeah, and, yeah, and I'm yeah. just happy, man. I, I, I love yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sets the tone. What did you notice, like when you started meditating? You know, when when did you start feeling that difference in, yeah. in your life and in your football? You, you know what I felt, bro? I, I felt more thankful. I love that. You know, yeah, yeah. Th this helped me to be more thankful, man. Like, look where we are, look where we have, look yeah. where we, look where we can have, and look where we can achieve. Look what we can say to mm, people. Mm. Just be thankful. Absolutely. <laughs> we Absolutely. just we just don't need any more any anything else. Absolutely. And then I Absolutely. think when we get to to this point, you just enjoy life, and, Absolutely. and you just Absolutely. you just went to the locker room and you just you say hey good morning to anyone to everyone exactly. with a exactly. smile. Exactly. Just go on the field training mm. in the morning with a smile, mm. and this mm. helps you to go through the day. Mm. Yeah, I, I love that. I mean, I, I touched on it before about you know teammates being angry at you and yelling and. You know, even in daily life, when people disrespect you or they they talk bad to you or, or they give you a bad attitude, it's not a reflection of you. It's a reflection of them because they're not happy inside. Yeah. I think the world needs a bit more meditation, you know, yeah. a bit more focusing on the breath and themselves because you know that'll make it the world a better place. Yeah, definitely, man. I I I think this is a this is really important for the people to understand that it is just you and yourself mm. you with yourself mm. and and if you work on yourself then you you just spread this happiness on everyone else around you mm. and then as you said man if you have teammates that they just are jealous of you then then just just, just be it you yeah, know yeah, just yeah, so yeah. be it yeah, and, yeah, exactly, and they, exactly. they're they're gonna it's gonna be a point where they're gonna change exactly and they're gonna appreciate what you do and how you are that they 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 are gonna want to learn from you exactly and they're gonna exactly. come up to you and say hey jordy Hey, yeah, yeah. nice work, or hey, how do you do this? How do you do yeah, that? And yeah, yeah. For sure, man, for yeah, sure. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I mean, something that I always say, it's a kind of, you know, uh, contraindicatory statement is the most selfish thing, the most unselfish thing that you can do is to be selfish. Yeah, exactly. When you take care of yourself, exactly. yeah. uh, you know, I mean, obviously, Giuseppe told me you have, you have a, uh, a child now. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, obviously, you have your wife. Uh, but when you take care of yourself, obviously you love them so much, you want to give them your energy, but when you take care of yourself mm -hmm. and you, you, you rise up to your uh, biggest energy potential, then you can give that energy to others. Yeah. But if, you know, I've seen many people, you know, many people close to me, they just, you know, others, 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 and then they let their health diminish, their mm -hmm. mindset diminish, and then they're like, what's going on? So I, I think that's massive. Yeah. It's nice that you mentioned now my kid is uh, seven weeks old. Man. And um, we actually have a gift for you. Uh, oh no! Yeah, yeah, yeah. No way! <laughs> yeah, we, we, we so want to. Yeah, man. we want to congratulate. Oh nice! Yeah. Oh my so god, man! Organic champagne. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Thanks for so sure. much. Sure. We appreciate yeah. it, man. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, he, 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 he's maybe wake up at 7 a.m., but I still meditate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care. Yeah, I yeah. don't care. I just tell my wife, just take him for 10 minutes. Then I'm, I'm just there with you afterwards. But Love I it. have to meditate because I'm, I'm the most important one from myself. Mm, and um, mm, mm. if I'm not good, then he's not going to be good. Absolutely. And if Absolutely. I'm not good, my wife is not going to be good. I love just, that. Just I like love this, that. man. I love that. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just about you know embracing it and, and, and being the best man possible for, for exactly, your son and your exactly. wife. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I, I love it, bro. I love it. Yeah, man. So, you know, what what happened? At, you know, how how was that month overall? How, how can you reflect on that month with the first team? I just learned to. I just learned that everything is possible. Because I, I saw so many big players around me and I, I was like, they are humans, man. Mm. And sometimes we think now they are yeah. just stars. Or yeah, just, yeah, yeah. No, no, they are just humans. Yeah, they, yeah. Are, they have also skin and yeah, they just yeah, yeah. have, um, you know, thoughts and yeah, families yeah, 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 yeah. and they, they, they're just human beings. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. that's what I learned then. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I saw that I, I can also be there mm, because I, yeah. I was there for a month. Okay, just then try to be there. Mm, mm, and then mm. your talent and your dedication it's gonna bring you maybe not there, but as high as possible. And that's mm -hmm. what I learned this month. Yeah, I love that. I, I always say, strive to be perfect, and then you'll become excellent. Yeah, exactly, bro. Yeah. This is amazing, yeah. this is amazing. Just just set up like, like just set up your work ethic and dedication as high as possible. And maybe you don't get to a point, but for sure you're gonna improve. Yeah, yeah for sure yeah, you're gonna yeah, improve. Yeah, yeah, you don't know where, but for sure you're gonna improve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely, absolutely, yeah. I love it. So any uh, any interaction with Messi during, during this month? <laughs> Bro, Messi is really shy, man. Yeah? Really yeah. shy, man, really shy. Um, the only interaction I had with him, uh, it was that he, he said on the pitch, um, bien jugado Jordi, does he say, well played Jordi. Wow, wow. The only How thing- How did that feel? <laughs> hey, bro, I was the happiest man yeah. on earth, man. I swear, it yeah, was amazing, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. I was like, uh, yeah. Nowadays, I still what I yeah. see. Him what was the action? TV, what was the action? That you did? The action was just like a goal. Yeah, yeah. It was just like a goal yeah. in training. Small side the trainings, and I, I, I don't even remember how it was, but I just, I just scored. He was with us, yeah. and he just told me, "Hey, been yeah. jugado, Jordi." Yeah. Wow. And it, this was the only yeah. thing he yeah. he told me, and I told him, because as I said, he was really shy, and also he tries to also be really independent mm, because um, <laughs> a lot of people want something from him. Yeah, and I think when you are so big, you just have to mm. you just have to separate mm. from mm. from the rest a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, man. So could you take us on on the next step? You know, into into France. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This was um, also I, I signed one year. Um, I also went on trials. Mm. Um, oh, we, they made you go on trials. Yeah. Also, yeah, yeah. It was okay. crazy. It was crazy, and I was there for um, almost the whole preseason. Mm -hmm. And then it got to a point where where they they didn't want to sign me because they didn't think that I was uh, I, I did so good that they didn't they didn't they didn't um, believe me you know yeah, they, 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 they just thought I had something behind that um, you know like some maybe addiction or something that um, they, they didn't believe me and then I said hey just, just I, I go home mm. if you want to sign me just mm. tell me because I'm, mm. I'm going home mm. I, I could not I could not stay there anymore any more time mm -hmm. um, and they just offered me a contract one year contract and then this year was also difficult because the captain was on my position and the mm -hmm. captain was a really good player. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then that year I ended up playing maybe 20 games, but starting maybe six mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. second tire French, mm -hmm. uh, France. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how, how was the adaptation to, to that level? What, what was the difference, you know? No, this, you this, was, uh, this was, I would say, um, I, I would say easy because I came I came already from the, from that preseason yeah. um, with FC Barcelona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was and it was um, everything was slow yeah, motion. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was ready to go, man. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, ready yeah. to I was ready to go yeah. work hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so that adaptation was easy, football wise, but the life was really really hard. Yeah, yeah because yeah. again, it was like people all, all all people mm. already. Um, with their families, their friends, yeah, and I yeah. was the only one speaking Spanish there. Wow! And wow, um, wow. yeah, it was. Uh, I was not. No, no, easy. For sure. It was not easy. No, yeah. I mean, I think that's a great point that I want to touch on. You know, that that not many people realize. Yeah, you might have these lucrative contracts. You know, but you know, maybe you don't speak the same language. You don't have friends. You don't have family there. It's not easy. It's a yeah. lonely road. It's a lonely journey. Yeah. So I, how did yeah. you deal with that? It's, it's, yeah. As you said, man, it's a lonely road, man. Yeah, it's yeah, a lon yeah. lonely journey. Um, you and if you want to do it, you just have to do it. You just have to to go with it and um, you just have to understand that you, you're you alone, man. Like maybe you have friends in Spain or your family and my mom can come every mm, month. Mm, mm. But you, you're alone, man. You cook yourself and you uh, you just, 
you're, you're you with yourself. Yeah. And um, and that was a uh, that was difficult because it was my first year abroad. Um, but uh, again, I, I was ready for it because I, I really understood what it took to be a professional mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think that's really well said and, and you don't know until you really experience it. So I'm glad you're sharing, you know, you have a bad game, you have a bad training. You come home to an empty apartment, you're staring at the wall <laughs> and then you have people, oh yeah, you can FaceTime. It's, it's, it's different than yeah. being in person, yeah. you know? It's not easy, man. Yeah, yeah, it's not easy. absolutely. But, but as I said, if you want to do it, yes. if you want to be a professional, you have to pay this. This is the price you have to pay. Exactly, this exactly. Yeah, I was uh, 19 and this is the price you have to pay. Mm -hmm. And it's, mm -hmm. it's okay, you know? You, you just do it and mm -hmm. you're just happy to do it and then mm. take this challenge. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So so how were how are the guys there? You know, were they welcoming? What, what, was, what was the feeling you had there yeah they were all, they were closed they were closed mm -hmm. because I, I went to an island course Corsica mm -hmm. um, and the people there they were also a little bit um, yeah they, they just were close um, people um, they were really with their culture and mm. they didn't open up really much to to um, to people from outside of France mm -hmm. or outside of mm. from Corsica um, so I, I only have contact with one guy there like mm -hmm. this is a yeah this is also life man and, yep. and um i remember he he's an african guy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he came also from africa alone and then we just wow, got wow. along so so well yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and now he's playing in olympiacos wow for wow. a long time yeah wow, wow. so he was uh, he was yeah, good man yeah yeah african guys man they always they always provide a good vibe you know it's easy to yeah. connect with those guys yeah. always happy like you were talking about yeah. before you know grateful yeah. grateful for the opportunity to come from africa to, exactly. to europe and get that opportunity and for me, every single African that I've played with, I've I've always cracked joke with, jokes with. I've always been friends with because they're open, they're willing to have fun, and, and you know they work. They're know? always smiling, man. Yeah. I I think one one um, one teammate here in Afghanistan and he told me, hey, do you know why in Africa we don't have depressions? They don't have. Bro they it doesn't oh, exist. I love this. The term. Yeah. There's no depressions in Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be because they're just happy with with what they have. You know the depression comes when you when you think that you need something that you don't have. In Africa, it doesn't exist. Mm. No one has depressions. Mm. And I was like, "Oh my God, man, that's that's true." Yeah. And it's yeah. just what you said. Like they're happy. They're mm -hmm, thankful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that, bro. It's it's, it's unbelievable. And and I, and I think you know it's a big problem we have in the U.S. I can't speak on Europe, but dude, you go in, you know, a doctor sees you're a little down or you're depressed, and instantly. Boom, medication. In Europe is the yeah, same. Yeah. But they don't look at your social circle, your relationships, how are you eating, how are you sleeping, how are you training. You know, and, and then the mental aspects you're talking about, the you know, the ability to, to meditate and, and, and be still. Can you get out a journal, write things that you're grateful for? How about you be grateful for what you have and not what you don't have? Yeah. So so I think that's massive. I think that's massive. Yeah, yeah. Nah, big time, big time. This was a this was a um, big difference. Like fr from from the time that he told me this, my mind changed. We we cannot be we, we should not be depressed mm -hmm. because we should not we should not wish the things that we don't have. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. just, just just be happy with the things that you have and the, with the things that you can achieve with your work ethic, with your discipline, mm -hmm. all the all mm -hmm. the things that mm -hmm. you've been saying. Mm -hmm. Just just be like this. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I have a similar story. I got a guy on my team. He's like. You know, Eric, you know why uh, we continue to, you know, develop in Europe and, and the talents that are here, th they fall lower because it's all we got, mm -hmm. you know, they, they have other things, they have distractions, but we come here for one reason, you know, and, and you know, I've, I've gotten fr really friendly with a uh, Nigerian guy on my team and he describes this similar, you know, obviously not the same development as, uh, you know, in Barcelona, but you know, it's 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 a it's a hard world out there. You know, yeah. you gotta live on your own. You gotta you know develop yourself. So yeah, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. yeah so uh, you know, after after you know twenty appearances, six starts in France. What what was the next move? The next move was in uh, USA. Uh huh. Yeah, uh -huh. Kansas City MLS. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, my agent at the time, he he was working really good in, in MLS, and mm. then he just um, she said, hey, why don't you go there? You you try again for a week. You go, you see how it is, and then if you like it, you, you just stay. Mm -hmm. And that, I remember at the beginning, I didn't want to go because MLS at the time, it was already becoming big, but yeah. not that much as, as it is today. Um, and I was like, no, you know, I, I want to stay in Europe. I just play in France, second division. I think I can stay. Mm. Um, I didn't want to back, go back to Spain because the, the conditions in Spain were really bad mm. already there at the time. 
um, like not good money, the level was not so good. And then I, I, I wanted to stay already out, outside from Spain. And then I said at one point, okay, here I go. I just go one week. Mm -hmm. I loved it, bro. Yeah, yeah, It yeah. was amazing. Yeah. I'm telling you, it was amazing. I had also a lot of Latino guys. Um, like they just, they just took me like this. Yeah. They already come to us. Love that. You know, and 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 I have a lot of connections now in in Kansas, still in Kansas City. Mm. Um, thanks to that that period that I was mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that, bro, and I love that you point that out. You know, actually, so, something interesting to talk about is, you know, in the last couple of years, I, I've noticed a little bit more, you know, hate to Americans and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, say that anyone's oppressed or anything like that, but you don't realize until you go there. I think, you know, such a diverse place. We welcome people. We don't yeah. want people to feel alone. So so I'm happy you shared that. Yeah. So, so, so how was the experience there? Bro, you... It was amazing. Yeah, it was yeah. one of the best places I've been into awesome. so far. That's yeah, awesome. Really, by by far, I would say because um, it was really professional. They just had won the MLS title, I think, two mm, years mm. two years ago, two years before. Um, uh, it was good money, I have to say. It was a mm, good contract. Mm, mm. So um, and they just wanted to repeat um, the MLS title and also the Open Cup. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and and the team was was just so great mm. full of good people nice. i think uh, peter vermees he's still the coach yeah, nowadays yeah. um he, he worked on that yeah he um he only wants good people in the team That's and awesome. he works that in order that the, the, the team is together and they just play together mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i remember doing a lot of stuff off the field with every one of them it was amazing i, I just have good works for, w good words from them yeah, yeah. because i i really had a great time great mm, time mm. yeah great time that's awesome so how was it in mls you know what was the what was the difference you know coming from you know playing in spain at uh, the best club in the world uh don't hate guys uh, <laughs> france how was it it was cool man because um it was no pressure. Yeah, yeah. I think it was no pressure because it, there, there's not this relegation thing that in Europe you you really feel it. You really feel it. Or I have a, I had a hard time with this in mm -hmm, France, mm -hmm. especially because we just um, we almost also got relegated like in 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 the team that I was on loan, um, and I just felt the pressure. And then mm -hmm. when I go uh, when I get to the USA, I just feel like released. I just feel like mm -hmm. probably I was enjoying it more the, the games. Sure. Yeah. For sure because it was no pressure and then you know if you lose it seems like it doesn't happen anything you know I, I just saw the reaction of every teammate like mm. okay we lost okay just we lost you know no, no problem like yeah mm. like just play better the next game but um, it's not the end of the world you know mm. and in mm. Europe it's for me the contrary yeah, like if yeah, you yeah, lose yeah, yeah. it's not the end of the world but yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the week is not nice yeah, yeah, yeah. the next week is yeah, not nice yeah yeah, yeah. Did you did you enjoy that or what was your feeling in USA? Yeah, like the, that that um, that type of release yeah. if you lost or that. Bro, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh -huh. I enjoyed it a lot. It, mm -hmm. it made me play better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I, I I I was thinking also like, okay, if we lose, mm. let it be. You know, it's For just sure. like this, and For then sure. the next next game we're gonna do better. Yeah, yeah. You know, For and sure. it was not it was not it was not so so negative uh -huh, in the uh -huh. usa you, mm -hmm, you, you lose mm. and um i liked it a lot for sure for sure <laughs> yeah with that being said do you think the u.s should uh implement a promotion relegation do you think it would change the level of football do you think it would change the level of development in the u.s um probably yes uh the level of development yes probably mm. yes um but i would not change it man Mm, it was mm. so nice and I enjoyed it a lot, yeah. so much that I, I would not change it. For sure. I, I think the, the organization of, of sports in the USA is so nice. It's perfect. For me, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. And all the, the, the teams here in Europe mm. and the systems here in Europe, it, it should be implemented that way. For sure. And For sure. Um, I, I would not change it, to be honest. But I think the development would be a little bit better. Absolutely. I think so, yeah. Absolutely. And how, how was life off the field? You know, uh, did you enjoy it? Really much. Yeah, really yeah. much. I was living also next to some teammates yeah, yeah. Um, and we would do every day something different, yeah, every yeah, day yeah. something different, like um, we would go to concerts, we would go to, yeah. um, I don't know, um, dinners, um, but just simple things, you know, not not big things, but like, yeah, we just we, we would just go on the streets and mm -hmm, mm -hmm, just do mm -hmm. something. In Kansas City, maybe from the people that don't know it, it's 
still a big city. Yeah. It's not New yeah. York, it's yeah, not, yeah, yeah. not LA, but it's just still a big yeah, city yeah, yeah. and there's a lot of things to do Absolutely. every day. Absolutely. And you just can go to museums and you can do, you awesome. can do a lot of things and, mm. I, and, and we did, man. Mm. Yeah, with that being said, and like, like, you've, like this whole conversation has been, it's all about happiness, all about gratitude. Yeah, were, were you happier? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was really happy, yeah, I was yeah. really happy. I, I wanted to stay my mm-hmm. whole life, mm-hmm. really. Mm-hmm. I wanted to stay my whole life because I, I felt really um, a connection with the American That's mentality. Awesome. Yeah. I love that. I, I really felt that a nice connection. And I, I, I experienced a little bit this American dream. Like if, if you work hard, if you work and dedication and, and, and you know, resilience, you, you, just, you just can get what you want. And mm-hmm. I felt mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that in America, it was possible. I love that, bro. I, I just felt it, bro. I just yeah, felt yeah. this connection, and I, yeah. I love, I loved it. I love that, yeah. bro. Listen up, Europeans. <laughs> <laughs> not really, bro. Yeah, it's like, it's yeah, like, it's yeah, not yeah. really. Yeah, no jokes, man. Absolutely, no jokes, bro. Absolutely, yeah. I tell people that all the time. Yeah, it's yeah. no matter no matter where I've been, where I've traveled. I, I love Europe. I love the rest of the world. Yeah. But for me, U.S. is still the best yeah. country in yeah. the world. Yeah. Yeah, with that being said, I mean, obviously, coming from Barcelona, you know, and and being super focused, and you know. Obviously, you were in school at the time, and you were playing with massive players. How important do you think you're off the field, how you feel off the field, is for your on-the-field performance? Tonight, we spotlight the unspoken struggle in the world of football. Young, ambitious athletes worldwide are lost in a storm of training plans, navigating through a sea of misinformation. Their dreams, their future, their potential hang in balance teetering on the edge of a confusing precipice. They aren't just chasing goals. They're seeking clarity amidst chaos. Stay with us as we explore this critical issue, questioning, is the future of football under threat? Come join the tribe, fam. I look forward to seeing you in there. Um, I, I don't think that much for me. It didn't play a, a big role. Like I could also stay my the whole day or the whole week at home mm-hmm, after training mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that I was also um, being able to play in a good level mm-hmm, on mm-hmm, the weekends. Mm-hmm. Actually, when I came here in Switzerland, we're going to get to the point, mm-hmm. but... It would, the life was completely different. Yeah, different. Yeah, I, yeah. I I didn't have much to do. I stayed a lot of at home, and my level rose up. Um, Interesting. So um, okay. yeah, I, I enjoyed both yeah, both yeah, both yeah. things. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Were you meditating back then? Um, in USA? Yeah. No. Nothing. Okay. Okay. Nothing. No. So maybe, maybe you're just calm yeah. naturally. Yeah. yeah, yeah no, no, yeah, it was it was natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was really natural. Man. That's awesome. So so at, how how was you know how was that KC? Uh, how how did that go that season? Um, that season, uh, a month after I landed to KC, uh, we won the Open Cup. Wow, and then, wow. Yeah, and then we got to penalties against Philadelphia, and I scored the last one. Scored the winner. Yeah, 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 yeah. I scored the winner, which uh, it, this was this this was the highlight of my sporting career. Wow! wow. Yeah, this was amazing. Like yeah, with, yeah, yeah. I, I think I was twenty twenty one, something wow, like this. Wow. And um, and we, just, I just won the, the Open Cup, you know. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. From that point. I was like an idol in, mm, in Kansas mm, City, mm. and um, it was nice, man, to leave all these things. Yeah, it was yeah, really nice. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, it just came new, you know. I I didn't have a great year in France. Yeah. I didn't have a great year in in the second team of Barcelona. And then I got there, and a month after, I just win the Open Cup. I scored the last penalty, and I'm like an idol. Mm. Um, I was the youngest uh, at, um, teammate. I was the youngest wow, person in, wow. in in the time. Mm-hmm. In, in sporting KC and yeah it was it was amazing man yeah, it yeah, was amazing yeah, yeah. yeah that's awesome man so did you, so you said you, even though you were young you you felt the respect from the teammates yes because my work ethic was really good yeah mm-hmm. and um, I worked a lot also mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. this dedication I I, I never lost it mm. since uh, since Barcelona and and I continue to do this my whole life. And I I earn my respect just working a lot in training sure, and just sure. just going against the best players in uh, in the team mm. that they were earning a lot of money I was mm. I was it was okay but you know the, the difference was a lot mm-hmm, and you mm-hmm. know also with uh, international football players mm. like Benny Philhaber I don't know if you yeah, know yeah. and Susie and yeah, all yeah, these yeah. guys that at the time were really big yeah 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 and I just 
I just I just went against them yeah, and um, sure. with respect and I just earned my respect like this. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, like you said from the beginning of the conversation, you sound like, you know, you, you just have no fear, you know? You, yeah, you exactly, just go in yeah. and, and, and whatever happens, yeah. happens. I think this is really interesting. I, I have I do have fear, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do have fear. But I I, I, I respect the fear and I I just try it. Yeah. Mm, I, mm. I think I think every one of us have fear. Um but I, I, I just I just do it because I think and I'm sure that if I try it I I will see then that fear is, is just in my mind. Exactly. You know, it's exactly. just a thing that we made up in our minds. Exactly. And, Oh my God! This is a I don't know. Let's say Leo Messi. I cannot yeah, defend yeah. him. Why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just try. If, if, if he get, if he dribbles you, just okay. Then mm-hmm, just go mm-hmm, next time. Mm-hmm. Or um, if you have to leave a new experience in the USA, you have to go alone, mm. and then you have to compete against big players. Mm. It's gonna. Are you gonna have fear? Yes, but it's just your dream, you Absolutely. know. And if you want to do it, um, you fear at some point. I think it disappears. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I, I completely agree, and, and and I think you know from from my bit of my journey and what I've seen is, you know, I think the most successful players are you know even business people, whatever it is, it's the ones that can because everyone we all have stress, we all have fears, we all have anxiety, but it's how you deal with that, yeah. and how you react. Yeah, hundred percent, bro, hundred percent, and and I still have fear nowadays, mm-hmm. um, and and I just think if I try it and I miss. I miss, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not perfect. And I'm sorry for the other ones, from my fans, for the whole city, mm, but I'm, mm, I'm sorry. I'm, mm, just, I'm, I, mm. I'm also a human being doing um, what he loves. Exactly. And um, I think if I would not try it, I would feel so bad. Mm, and I, mm. would feel, I would feel disappointed on myself. Mm. Because if I don't try it, then I would go home and say, you should have. Yeah, you should yeah, have, and yeah. I, I would, I would be the whole day thinking, "Oh my God, Jordi, why didn't you do this?" Absolutely. Um, and if I do, but I mean, I, 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 I feel also like, you know, powerful when I try. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you don't want that fear. You know, it's worse to have regret than than exactly. to face the fear. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so with that being said, do you quote believe in failure? And with that being said, how do you deal with a mistake, or how do you deal with a failure? Yeah. This I, I, I really had to deal with a lot of failures and I think every professional football player you also know it, mm. we have a lot of failures. Mm. And, mm. And, and in my life, I think in my sporting life, I had more failures than anything else. Mm. And how I dealt with them took me where I am today. And I dealt with the failures saying to myself, bro, you just tried, you know? Yeah. You were doing what you loved. Um, no one can take this from you. Just continue with it. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I remember my mom after this experience in Kansas, mm-hmm. in Kansas City. She told me, "Hey, you know, you had so many bad experiences. Why don't you go and study?" And I said, "Mom, I can I can study online, yeah. but I'm I'm not going to stop playing football exactly. and doing exactly. what I love. You know, exactly. I just have to keep trying. And our lives is so short that we, that I have, mom, I have to try. I'm sorry. Exactly. Exactly. And she said, "Okay. Yeah. Yeah." Do you think that, that that sense of failure and why people get scared at chasing their dreams and what they love is because they're afraid of what others are going to say about them? Yes, bro, definitely, yeah. definitely. Like, it, it's, it's um, for example, I respect a lot what you do For sure. because um, n- not a lot of people do this, man. And a lot of people would say, yeah, yeah, I don't know, I, I, I don't like to to go in front of a camera and spread the message. Mm-hmm. And bro, bro, chapeau, you know, it's it's really nice what you do because, yeah. because, and because people, a lot of people can learn from you and um, and for sure, a lot of people would like to do what you do, mm. but they don't do it because mm. of what other things. Oh no! Oh, maybe my 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 friend in school, maybe yeah, what is what is he doing? Yeah, you know, yeah. or or my I don't know. Yeah. But 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 you do it. You, you did it. You know, mm-hmm, you did it, mm-hmm, and you mm-hmm. know how important it is what you do, mm-hmm. and um, you just did it from the, for the others, and and this is nice, man. Absolutely, I appreciate it. It means yeah. a lot. Yeah, and, and, you know, for others listening, you know, I, I never, you know, in the beginning, I maybe I did care a bit what people th- uh, thought, but, you know, I, I realized personally when I when I went to Germany uh, for the first time playing overseas alone, you know, having, you know, different language, no family, not many friends, to be honest, uh, I got a wake-up call. I came from college, I thought I was some big guy with my chest out, but the harsh reality is no one really cares about you except your close friends and your family. And that's, that's just the truth. It's hard to accept, but once you accept that harsh reality, 
then you just chase your dreams and you don't care about what anyone says. Because I have, I have a perfect example. You know, I know this is your podcast and I, I talk a lot. No, but it's nice to know about yeah, you, man, yeah, because, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's for sure a nice experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, so, you know, I, I had this, this one buddy in high school, you know, um, bigger American football player, thought he was a tough guy, you know. We, we, we were acquaintances. Maybe he thought I, I was his boy. He was never really my close boy. But when I first started doing this, you know, I, I got um, – I studied to be a personal trainer and I got the license and I was starting my business, you know, I was small in a sense. He, he always made fun of me, you know, and because he thought he was, like I said before, he was trying to bully me. I was like, all right, buddy, whatever, you know, just ignored it, pushed it away. Whatever. Uh, I think it was about three years ago, about, you know, five, six years into the business. I had about, you know, hundred something thousand followers on Instagram and he was just starting a clothing business. Reached out to me. Hadn't talked to me for a while. Never said, you know, well done. Never congratulations. Bro, can you help me, you know, promote the, the brand? You know, can you be an influencer for us? I'm like, no. Nice, no, man. you didn't support me from the bottom. I'm not supporting you, man. And that's how I am. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm a, you know, my friends who are good to me, the close people, they're my absolute brothers, you know. Nice, man. Whatever it is, if I'm in a relationship with a girl, I treat her like a queen, you know, but... When people disrespect you and they're not with you from the bottom, you know, it's, nice. you know, it's, for me, it's like, you, you always, you always remember that, you know, yeah. it's always in the back of your head. Definitely. Nice, yeah. nice yeah. experience, man. Yeah, nice yeah, experience. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's not easy when we start, um, you're going to have a lot of haters, mm. you're going to have a lot of people that don't like you and they say, Hey, what, what, what is this guy doing? You know, yeah, what is yeah. Eric doing? Yeah, oh, yeah. Come on. But once you are someone, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then they come back. Then you say, yeah, sorry, guys, mm. I'm someone now. Mm. Mm. Just please let me do my work. Yeah, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Nice. Man. Yeah. I appreciate that, man. So, yeah, you know, getting back into your journey after, you know, the season in KC, what, what was the next step? This was this was also my biggest failure in my career. Mm. Kansas City, my biggest um, achievement and my biggest failure was in Kansas City. Why? Because um, after the Open Cup, we get to the playoffs eliminated by Portland. I got in vacation, uh, off season, I trained a lot. I came back physically machine. Um, I start playing some games, but I, I, I get like some some um, injuries. Mm. And then I think at the time it was, I don't know, I think eight spots from uh, from players from mm -hmm, abroad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, it was uh, June. And then the coach came to me and say, hey, can you come to my locker room? You know, before training, I was with cleats on already and football boots on. And I remember this time was a Champions League week. Hmm. And then he um, he came and said, uh, come to my to my to my um, how do you say to my bureau? To mm. my, yeah. I was like, yeah. And I was like, OK, he's going to be nice because he's going to he's going to tell me, hey, you're going to play. And I was not playing at all at that <laughs> time. <laughs> then he came and said, you just have to leave. And I was like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jordi, you just have to leave. We want to bring in another um, um, international player. And you just have to leave because we decided that you you lose your spot. And I was like, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I had signed uh, previously a four-year contract, but optional. Mm -hmm. Every year was mm -hmm. optional. Mm -hmm. So they could fire me any time mm -hmm. and I didn't know that mm -hmm. um, my agent at the time didn't didn't, wow. didn't tell me this and uh, you know I was 20 should I should I should I should I read all the contract yes but I was 20 you know I didn't speak so fluently English and I expected my agent to explain me this he didn't um, so he just the coach yeah he was just as cold as this you know wow. and he just said you just have to leave and I was wow. like why I, I'm, 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 I had a car, I had my really nice apartment, my friends, I wanted to stay there my whole life. Then he just said, you know, you, we want another uh, international player and you're not playing good enough. And I, I remember I started crying a lot in front mm, of him. Mm. And then I, he told me, yeah, then you, just, you, you can leave already. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I leave the locker room and then the, um, the team manager tells me, tomorrow you, you don't need to come anymore crazy bro this was crazy bro yeah yeah so what did i have to do i had to sell all my furniture in in as fast as possible my car i had a dog at the time a puppy um i had to find a solution also with this um 
and after a week I was at home. Wow. Back in Spain. Back in Spain, yeah, with my mom. Wow. And then and then I remember that week the next week when I was at home I was sick. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. of all that pressure that I, yeah. I had to deal with. Um, selling everything, you know, telling all my friends, all my family that I I I just cut off from my best experience of my life. Yeah. Um, I remember I had a not a girlfriend, but I was I was um, um, I was uh, dating someone. Mm -hmm. It was bad, man. It mm -hmm. was bad. It was really bad. It was really bad. It was the worst. It was the biggest failure of my career. Yeah, 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 yeah. really much. And I respect a lot Peter Vermees, the coach. Yeah. I still respect yeah. it a lot because he has to do it every season with a couple players, mm. and it's not easy to do this with of players. Of course. So. At the time, I hated him, but I understood. Okay, yeah, he has to do this. This is business. Like as, said, as yeah, we, yeah, yeah, as we said before, this is business. Is if you understand it, you can be successful. If you don't, you're out. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so how how'd you deal with that? You know, <laughs> did you call your agent? Like, Dude, you didn't even read the contract. What's yeah. going on? So, you know what I said um, first time I called him. I said, "Hey, they told me this," and then he said, "Yeah, I, I knew." He they they called me before, and I said, "Yeah, but." Do I get any money from this? Yeah. Then he says no. Why? Because you sign optional. You, you sign options every year. And then I said, yeah, uh, thank you so much, you know. And and and, and he said, yeah, you you, just, you can go back to Spain, and then we will find another solution. Wow, wow. Yeah. And then I was sick this week, and then I had to I had to find another club. No, I I, I think the MLS clubs they had three days to take my my contract. Mm. But um, I, I remember I, I had not but money and no one took my contract, no one. And then, yeah, and then I had to find a new, a new club. Um, but I remember I was so bad and mentally I was devastated and I didn't want to play football anymore. Wow. Um, and I took six months off. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. W was, that, was that the first feeling that you had that, you know, you might want to hang the boots up? Yeah. Yeah. This was the first, this was the first time where I said, maybe you're not good enough you know maybe you're not good enough even if you experience so much mm. in such a short time but Jordi maybe it's this is not meant to be you know mm. and that's when my mom came and said Jordi why don't you study mm. and I said after you know um, thinking a lot I said mom this is my dream yeah I'm sorry but yeah um, I just have to continue with mm -hmm. it and this these six months I I, I studied University, um, which I already started in Barcelona, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I kept studying. Um, but I think I took just six months off mm -hmm. football. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's a great point, and, and and something I get asked a lot as well is, what if I'm losing love for the game? What if uh, you know I don't want to play anymore? What if I want to hang up the boots? And I think you 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 made the right choice, and you could correct me if I'm wrong. You studied, you tried the next choice, yeah, and that choice wasn't for you, yeah. and that love came back. Is that yeah. true? Yeah, it's just like this, and um, and if you if you lose the love, it's okay, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just embrace it, and um, the next opportunity comes. Um, and life change, life we, we we change also, you know. And life changes, and you know, new new people come into your life. People go, and new experiences mm, come and go, mm. come and go. And um, if you love, if you lose the love for the game, you just lose it, yeah. and then yeah. you just take the new yeah. experiences. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I love that. I mean, I think you know. One of the pro one of the quote problems is you know when you're a footballer and you've done it all your life and you know you've gotten to the levels you've gotten to and you know other players you see football as you it's your identity mm -hmm. but I think you know kind of you know being able to extract away from that is important and then like you said it's not the end of the world your life mm -hmm. doesn't end if you stop playing football yeah. you know you find other other interests you find other things that you love and you go down that route so uh, you know to, to to others listening. It's not a must that you have to chase that dream, you know, and, and you know, maybe try stuff like he did and then he got back into the game. Exactly. This, this actually made me love the game even more because I thought, man, it cannot end up like this, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I, I, I love it so much that I, I just have to try so hard because I'm, sh I'm sure I'm sure I have a little bit of, 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 of talent. I, I have something inside of me. And I have to explode it. I yes, have to. Yes. I have to go until I can't anymore. Yeah, until yeah. football tells me, Jordi, this is it. This is it. And then, and I just did, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's awesome because you were talking before Giuseppe that you want to do this till you know, yeah. mid thirties, late thirties, yeah. especially how you take care of yourself. Yeah. So, 
What was the next step after those that six months? And the next step is that um, I uh, I wanted to go back to MLS. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to go back to America, man, and 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 um, I got in um, in contact with some people, uh, some agents, and then they told me, look, if you want to go to MLS, now no coach and no team, no teams want to take you, mm. so you just have to go to a to a division lower, mm. to a lower division, mm -hmm. NASL, um, Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. island. And then I said, okay. It was also the only offer that I got at the time. Yeah. Um, and I, I just took it. Yeah. I just took it. Wow. And then I went to I went to Puerto Rico. Yeah. And how so how was that? It was a bumpy road, man. Yeah. It was, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was really ups and downs. Yeah, it, yeah, was, yeah. it was it was it was um it was difficult uh, from a football point of view for myself also. Um, it was nice because the life there and I would say also the people were really open and yeah. and. You know, I, I met also uh, two teammates that I still have contact with them nowadays and I'm mm. really thankful. Mm. I learned a lot from mm. them. And you know, Eric, where I learned there is really to be to be really a professional. Like like yeah. with one teammate of mine, um, a Spanish one, Ramon Soria, he really showed me the importance of everything. Mm. Everything what I was doing, like eating good, sleeping good, this and that, he really took it to a next level because he was already doing it and mm -hmm. his love for the game was was so big that I, I learned from him. We were neighbors and, and, and I just did what he did. Mm. He was older than me and, and he had already experienced a lot mm. and I learned a lot from him. And, mm -hmm. and I, mm. I think at some point of our careers, um, we, we also need some mentor or we also need some people that, you know, drive us to the to the night to the to the good path to the good way yes. that we really understand yeah. what it takes exactly. and what we have to do and what what's really important and I I, I did and I, I I'm really thankful mm. um, about it yeah 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 I love that and, and and that's another reason that I try to get guys like yourself on because we, we're not everyone's not so lucky to have that ability to have someone hold your hand and you know walk you through and show them show you their day in the life how they treat themselves like yeah. a pro so. With that being said, can you walk us through a day in your life in, in Puerto Rico? You know, what was the? It was a special man because it was it was really hot, yeah, and yeah. then we used to train at eight a.m. in the morning. Wow, um, wow. Yeah, I woke up at six. Then we yeah. used to eat breakfast, train at eight, and then we were off. Yeah, we were off, and then um, we were really lucky that we lived next to the beach, so we went a lot to the beach. Mm. Also played football in the beach. Um, I kept studying that year online, um, and then th this was it, man. Not not much, not much. Mm. Um, just football, football, football. Study, study, study. Um, I remember also the life off the field in Puerto Rico is really dangerous. <laughs> yeah, there's I've a lot heard. of parties. I've heard. There's a lot of uh, yeah. There's a lot of things outside that can distract you a lot. Yeah. Um, but thanks to Ramon, actually, he was already married and he was already set up for life. Um, yeah, he took me to the, to the right path. Well, yeah. yeah. Yes, so with that being said, is there, you know, obviously, is there any way you would advise youngsters to try to avoid those distractions? 100%. 100%. This is the price you have to pay. Like um, you said about, you know, the loneliness. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Can, you, can you party? Yes. Can you, can you do extra things? Yes. Um, do you have to try it? No. Um, do you want to try it? Okay, try it. But don't do it re regularly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm, it's okay to party, yes. Not always. Mm -hmm. um, I just all I, I only I, I also say there's a, a balance. Exactly, you know, you just have exactly, to find the balance. Exactly. exactly. Um, you just want a game, party, bro. Exactly. Party, why yep, not? Yep. Um, don't get crazy, but just go out and you know drink drink, drink a couple beers mm -hmm, and then just mm -hmm. go and sleep. Um, you just want a, a game. Congratulate yes, yourself. Yes. Did you play good? Yes. Okay, just go. Um, not every time you win. If it's a big win, why not? Yeah. If you go with the whole team, just do it. Yeah. You know? Um, but obviously you have to know exactly when you can do it. Because this is the difference between mm -hmm. the players that lose their themselves during their careers and those who persevere. Yeah. And I also I also met a lot of players, especially here in Switzerland, that they love to party, they love to go outside, they love to meet other people and then mm -hmm. they just lose themselves. Exactly. And they are exactly. nowhere now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's very well being very well said, and we can take you know many things from that. I think number one, it's you know, 
pat yourself on the back and, and congratulate yourself and reward yourself for the discipline that you put in during the week and that win. Number two, find your balance. And then number three, like you were talking about before with Giuseppe, is, you know, every player has their own balance. You know, there's exactly. not there's not a balance for for there's not okay, this is your balance, you go out this amount of times a week, you don't go out. Like you said, you try it. Exactly. How bad does it make you feel? Exactly. Exactly. And then you and then you make your, your adjustment off of that. I mean, I had a teammate who the guy could go to sleep at five AM, wake up the next day and play unbelievable. Exactly. Me, I would be awful. Yeah, me too. So <laughs> it's 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 about finding finding your yeah. own balance. Yeah. Really well said. Yeah. Really yeah. well said. Yeah. Um I remember when I was young I I, I did this a couple of times. Um, wrongly, um, I went out the day before. I played awful, man. I played awful. All and my teammates. It was this was in MLS. Mm. My teammates they were playing amazing, and I was like, I can't. That and that's when I got a little bit injured. Mm. Um, and then I said, I, I, yeah, sorry guys, but I cannot go with you anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And and maybe I had to go through this to understand. Okay, Jordi, you are going the wrong direction. Mm. But then I, I learned it and I found I found my my own balance. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, well, like you said from before, you gotta. Those are the prices you have to pay. That's yeah. the sacrifice you have to make. Yeah. So yeah, how 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 things in Puerto Rico go? Um, it was it was good, um, and not good. Like it was really like uh, like I said, bro. Mm. It was like mm. positive, negative ups and downs. We as a team, I think we were not we were not together you mm. know um they sacked all we we had a coach they sacked him then the third coach took over we had to have another coach but then he st he ended up staying yeah it was really like it was really really difficult mm. it was really mm, difficult mm, mm, mm. um and then at the end of the season we had a hurricane wow we had to leave the island twice um i remember the first time they told us yeah look guys just um just protect your houses because probably the the the, the wind and the, the rain is gonna destroy your mm -hmm, your house mm -hmm. so try to protect your things mm -hmm. and then just leave one week until further notice mm -hmm, i went to mm -hmm. new york one week until fa until further notice mm -hmm. then the hurricane didn't touch the island wow, wow. then we had to come back yeah. without training we played a game wow um against north carolina i think it was um, and then, and then the second time, this time was bad, hurricane again. Wow. And then we had to leave. Stadium wow. destroyed, mm, a lot of water everywhere. Wow. Um, and we had to leave to Orlando. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. the, the, I think the club approached to us and said, "Hey, do you want? Do you guys want to finish the league? Do you mm -hmm. want to finish mm -hmm. the championship?" Mm -hmm. And we said, "Yes, of course." Then we went to Orlando. They took like really nice, nice houses. They divided us in two. Um, and we finished the league in Orlando, man. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It was uh, also a big experience, you know, yeah. hurricane in Puerto Rico, six yeah. hours yeah. Dif time difference from home. Yeah. From home, they, 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 was, they were reading the news and watching yeah, the yeah. news and, you know, trying to reach me. And I, was, yeah. I had no internet, nothing. Wow. This was a scary moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This was a scary mm -hmm. moment. I remember one night, man, it was, it was, uh, it was bad. We stayed in a hotel in the, in the middle of the city. Mm. Um, and, the night was crazy. Like the the, the every, everything was moving. The trees were were, were like mm. everything was mm. destroyed. Really, mm. like literally destroyed. Mm. No light. Um, the day after, I remember the every gas station was mm -hmm. was like mm -hmm. um, everything st stolen. Ah, it was bad, man. It yeah, was bad. Yeah. That's why we had to make a decision and leave the island. Yeah. yeah. Was it was were you scared? Was that the first time you saw something like that? I, I was I was really not scared because I felt protected by by Ramon and, and the guys yeah. were who stayed in the hotel yeah. um, but I, at one time when I was uh, when I saw the gas stations like these and also <laughs> the supermarkets with no food <laughs> um, I thought hey like this is serious man yeah, yeah this is yeah. serious and um, don't don't take it for granted and, and just protect yourself yeah, you know, yeah. this was the first time which, where I had to say protect yourself don't do stupid things don't go alone um, in the night especially on the streets mm. yeah, don't don't wear any jewelry yeah, nothing okay. and exactly. then yeah and then we had to leave but wow. this was a nice experience yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 after the years it was a nice experience. for sure yeah. for sure yeah so so after puerto rico what was the next step after puerto rico um i was also six months without a team okay yeah um, so two times man in my career and then I this time I was without a team because the offers that I got were not so good mm. um, I didn't want to go back to Spain I remember I, I got offers for 
it was not the money was nothing mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. the the environment was going to be also not so good and then i decided um, not to take any any offer mm -hmm. um until uh in Mar in march so we finished the league i think in october november and then in march St. Gallen, where i am today came mm -hmm. and told me hey you want to come for trials mm -hmm, again mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I said, of course, man. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. I came. I was preparing a lot myself, training alone. And then I, I came here and I, I and I came on Monday and Wednesday. They told me, okay, you you, you stay. Oh, wow. yeah. Nice. yeah, I mean, like you said, I mean, one of the, probably the hardest, besides injury, you know, the hardest part of a football's career is, is not being with a team. Yeah, really bad. Um, and then training individually. So how did you deal with that mentally? And how were you training individually? Um, I I don't want to say it was it was a bad time. It, w it was not a bad time um, because I knew somehow I knew that some opportunity was gonna come again. I don't know why. I don't know why. Mm. But I, I I said to myself, Jordi, just 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 be fit. Just keep yourself fit. And I remember, bro, I I was in my hometown with my mom at my home and then I, I, I woke up really early and I had to I had to I had to um, how do you say break home, break in break in um, into a football field it was private <laughs> and I, I, I didn't have any access yeah, yeah, and yeah. I had to break in no yeah yeah, yeah, we were, exactly. yeah until a policeman told me one day yeah. Come join the tribe, fam. I look forward to seeing you in there. Yeah, and then he told me, hey, what are you doing here, man? It's fucking 7, yeah, 7 a.m. Yeah, in the morning. Yeah. Um, no one is here yeah, and you are yeah. with the football. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, I explained my situation. Yeah, yeah. And then he told me, look, um, there's a concierge. There's the people um, responsible for this yeah, yeah, stadium. Yeah. Talk to them. They're going to leave the door open every day for you. Wow, that's nice. And every day when I was there, 7 a.m. in the morning, the door was open for me to train. Wow. It was wow. nice, man. It was nice. And after, when I signed here in F. St. Gallen, the season after, I, I brought them a, a jersey of mine. That's awesome. Yeah, That's that was awesome. nice. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. And the time was not so bad, to be honest. Um, I, I, I enjoyed it, man. The, this discipline, training twice yeah, a day, yeah. um, in the morning on the field, and in the afternoon on the gym. I, th I think I, I, I improved my strength. I... I, I <laughs> Yeah, I had to improve um, things that I mm -hmm. couldn't do when mm -hmm. I was with the team. Exactly. And then, and then I was ready to take over the next challenge. Yeah, 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 yeah. man. So, so, sometimes everything happens for a reason, and yeah. I think you did it. You said it really, really well, man. I try to give that advice when someone has an injury. It's like, do what you can where you are with what you have. Yeah. Okay, you don't have a team. You're gonna find a solution yeah. if you have that solution-based mindset and you have that discipline. What we we've been talking about you're gonna find the solution. But if you just, you know, say, oh, why me? You know, I feel bad for yourself. It's not gonna get you anywhere. And then you get into that struggle. I'm sure you've known players. I mean, I've known a lot of players who they don't have a team. They stop training. And that's how football is. What, you know, maybe for four months, you don't have an opportunity. One day you get a call from your agent. Three teams want you to come in for trial. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't been training for four months, yeah. you got no chance. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I really respect that, you know. Thank you, man. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. Appreciate it. With that being said, how, how did you train, you know, individually? Uh, because you know, it's it's not you know at, at the level you're at and the level you were at and what you're we're going to. It's not easy to replicate game situations. Yeah. How how were you training individually? To be honest, man, I, I saw a lot of videos in your social media. I was uh, training a little bit how you do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Appreciate um, that. I did a lot of uh, technical stuff and I tried to replicate, as you say, the game. Um, efforts mm. um, I was alone and for example I imagine my right back just um, doing a long diagonal and me mm. sprinting the ball was already there and I sprinted then I had to do a dribbling I was imagining my game in my head and I was replicating mm. um, actions of the game for sure in my head for sure yeah yeah I love that and, and honestly you know it's people think that it's overcomplicated you know yeah. they overcomplicate things with all these gurus on social media media promoting this diet that diet this fascia that it's just about the basics yeah. take yourself back to the basics be consistent be disciplined 
And as I always try to say with the young guys, it's like, you know, do things. Don't try to be too fast, you know, because then your technique will go down. Mm-hmm. Try to perfect those things, and then you could try to go into a game intensity. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I I try to, I try to to be me. Just try to be you, you know, and don't don't try to be um, the player that you are not, that you are that you're not, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And and mm-hmm. I try to do the the same efforts that I was going that I was doing in Puerto Rico, the same efforts that I was doing in Kansas City, and and so and so on, and 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 this helped me. That when I received this phone call that you that you talked about, and they told me next Monday you have to be in Switzerland, I was there on Monday and I I performed really good, and this this was the game changer mm, for me, mm. keeping me healthy and keeping me fit. Of course, this this helped me in order to come on Monday and really do a good training. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, you have you have some great points there. I mean, you know, um, number one, it's training right training properly doing the right things every day gives you the confidence you know and and everyone always asks how do i get more confident as a football or this that as we've been speaking about the whole time discipline brings confidence and then when you're disciplined you get results that brings even more confidence yeah. so yeah i mean I, I like you said it's 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 no magic trick and uh you know it's it's hard to have that discipline and you know another thing I want to add is uh, you know actually I had a similar situation when I was going back into in t- uh, to the U I was trying to go back to play at the U S um, and I didn't you know came back I thought okay coming from Europe I'll have some opportunities I didn't have anything and I spoke to you know Dennis uh, Giuseppe's partner also a great guy I called him like you know what would your advice be to me you know thirty five year old you know ten years as a pro and he said dude if you keep yourself injury free and you're healthy and you train hard and you're disciplined, something's gonna come, you know? And, and that, that, was, that was just great advice. This is yeah. nice, man, this is nice. Yeah, yeah I, 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 think, I think if you're able to keep yourself healthy, you've done already the 50% of everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just treat yourself good. Just treat yourself good and healthy, not just physically, but mentally. Just treat yourself good and then, and then everything can happen. Mm. And I, I, you, you mentioned also something that is just you, you know, and um, that brings the confidence to yourself. It's not the coaches, it's not the the, the, the staff, it's not the your mom, it's not your dad, bro. It's 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 you. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, then if mm-hmm. you have this discipline, you can you can gain this confidence. Absolutely. And this Absolutely. confidence will come. Absolutely. Will come. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and, and so, sorry that no, I no, 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 no. M- maybe not hundred percent this yeah, confidence, yeah, yeah. but for sure more than if you don't do anything. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and one thing that you said that I want to touch on is self respect, man. You know, when, 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 you, when you do the right things, the right habits, the routines, it's not just, you know, helping you physically. It helps you mentally because you show yourself that you respect yourself. Yeah. You show yourself that you care about yourself. I think Jordan Peterson said it. I don't know if you know, you're know you familiar with him. Uh, he said um, something about treating yourself like you would treat your, your, your loved pet. You know what I mean? You would never forget to feed the pet. Yeah. You would never forget to give the the pet supplements. Yeah. You would you would treat yourself like, you know, treat yourself like the pet that you care about. Yeah. And that brings on that self respect and that love for yourself. Yes, bro. And this that's what brings a, happiness. This is amazing self respect. Is and it's not so easy to have, because as 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 you say, man, um, you how how you treat your pet, you 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 know, you caress him. You you say hey how nice you look today hey wow hey yeah. do you say this yourself? Yes, perfect. Mm. No, maybe you have to change this. Yeah, because yeah. the self respect you start with self respect. Absolutely. And then Absolutely. bro, with self respect, then then you can then you can do a big big change. Yeah, yeah, big yeah, change. Yeah, man. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I love it, man. So yeah, coming into Switzerland, Saint Gallen. You know, you said different experience. How was that? Um, it was um, it was really professional. It was really professional. Um, Swiss people are really respectful um, and really dedicated and really work ethic. I, I think my I think a little bit my personality um, integrates a little bit what uh, Swiss pe- how mm-hmm. Swiss people are, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and this helped me a lot also to to um, to um, earn their respect from my teammates. Exactly. And then also from my coach. Like I I came, I. I was not playing a lot from my um, past clubs. I had two times six months without a club, and then I came and I I was like 
ready to go, man. I was ready to go, and then the coach saw it. As we as we mentioned before, the co- the people, the person that had to saw to saw it, he saw it. Yep, yep. And then I I just played every game, every game of the season, every game that I was available, I played. Awesome. Um, I I um was injury free. Um, nice. These five years, I was like, let's touch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I treat myself really good, man. Yeah. I, I respect myself. I, mm. I, I do everything I can to, to, to be fit and to be mentally fit and to be ready to help my team. And, awesome. um, and these five years have been amazing, man. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. And, and, and like you said, and you know, maybe, maybe those, those years before, and, and of course those years, they prepared you for this and, and, you know, they helped you develop that that discipline, that structure yeah. to prepare you for you know best five years of your career. Definitely, and I, I didn't know what was gonna come, but with all these years suffering and going through all these experiences, they set up this that I'm living today, and mm-hmm. I'm hundred percent sure that I'm 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 today the man that I am because of all what I experienced, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. this makes me also go into the trainings. What I said before, from zero. And I start from zero, and I know how how fast this business goes, and I know how um, fast the people forget about you, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then I just start from zero every every training, even though mm-hmm. I play every game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so how were the guys, you know, uh, in terms of you know welcoming you in, welcoming you into the club, uh, you know, the locker room? What was the difference in, in atmosphere and level? It was it was it was nice because um, we had a really nice French group. French speaking group um, I, I can speak French and, mm-hmm. and you know it was um, from the beginning these five years there's been every year a French group which I which we do a lot of things you know we, we share a lot of things uh, off and on the field and um, this helped me to mm. for my integration here um, and um, the first year was the, the, the big change but then then it was everything it came with the flow and and it didn't changed that much from the, from the first year mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I've been doing the same mm-hmm. yeah for sure and you know after two years uh, spent here you made a move to Basel yeah after three years, three years. Um, my contract I signed a three-year contract okay. sorry I didn't mention this yeah, yeah after these three years I was free uh-huh. free agent and I signed as a free agent in Basel okay and you know I, I got a lot of hate from everyone this mm. and I understand because uh, you change um, in Switzerland you change clubs mm-hmm. and Switzerland is really small yeah, we yeah. are only 10 teams in the in the league yeah um, about to be 12 but it, we were 10 mm. and then I got a lot of hate you know and not a lot of people understood the move um, they thought it was because of the money mm. but um, St. Gallen didn't help me to win the league and they didn't help me to play Europe and I wanted to play Europe I wanted to win the league I want I wanted to I wanted to be successful you know mm. I just I didn't want just to play. Mm. I wanted to win, and Basel took me to this to this direction. Yeah. And um, I I played Europe, mm-hmm. and we almost win the league. So uh, it was not it was not so bad mm. um, the move. But again, uh, failure. Um, I, when I signed for Basel, I signed with the president. Mm. They promised me everything, and yep. then it was a risk restructure in the club the club was restructured the president had to go wow. new president came in yeah. with new ideas new plans yeah. and i was not in his plans mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then in at the in the break at the in mid season he told me look i don't have any plan for you you know you can stay but you're not going to play mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and i said mm-hmm. okay i leave then okay and then and then sang allen contact mm-hmm, me mm-hmm. again mm-hmm. and they then want the man said, back yes exactly and then and then they told me look yeah we want you back. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you come? Yeah, yeah. Um, and among other offers that I had, I was like, I have to come back because it's my home. I, I feel good. You felt at home. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah it's yeah, home. Yeah, and yeah. and yeah. then I said, okay, awesome. I come back and, and, and I try to win here. You know, yeah, I just yeah. not try to play. I try to win. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And how was how was that experience playing in Europe? You know, first you know, your international European game. How was that? Who was it against? It was amazing. I we had to play qualifiers uh-huh. for Conference League. Mm. Um, and we had to play three qualifiers. We won them all, um, but it was it was you know it was another experience. It, it was it was really nice because you I felt really a big player playing Europe, playing twice a week, you know, um, traveling on Wednesday, playing on Thursday, coming back on Friday, playing on Sunday. Mm-hmm. It was mm-hmm. nonstop, mm-hmm. and it was amazing. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I felt really, 
how how the big players um, live, you yeah, know. Yeah. And, and this was, you know, I, I wanted to experience this, yeah, you know. Yeah, and yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm happy with it. Maybe um, God's will, we will play again in Europe. Um, I don't know, um, but I would I would love it, man, mm. because it's really it's really amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, was there a di- is there a different feel um, to to a to a European game than, than a league game? Different feeling? D- yeah, different feel in the atmosphere, the crowd, the yes, level. Bro. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, it's completely different. You just you just get this um, you know this accreditation, you yeah, know, with the yeah. conference league, yeah, your yeah, name, yeah. your picture, you know, you just um lot lo- lot of more cameras uh-huh. on you. Um, um, a lot of more money obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. more more everything it's just more, it's just bigger you know it's just bigger more people more people watching you mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you have a, a, a bigger impact in, mm-hmm, in, in mm-hmm. not only in, in Basel but mm-hmm. in Switzerland mm-hmm. and in the society also um, it's just it's just bigger of mm-hmm. what you play here in Switzerland for sure yeah. for sure there's nothing to compare about yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, did you feel a lot of pressure in your first European game or? not at all no. man I, I enjoyed it from the yeah. first moment and, yeah. and you know I, I, I wanted to play so bad that I I, I enjoyed every mm, minute of mm, it mm. and um, it was a uh, obviously pressure yes of course yeah because we want to win and, and you know you, you don't want to be eliminated but it was but I, I could transform this pressure to 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 joy I love yeah. that. Yeah, I yeah. love that. I, th- I think that's something. It's it's you can either take that pressure and be anxious about it, or you can transform it and, and take it to be excited. Yeah. And you sound like you yes. did it to be excited. Yes. And and you know, um, I had a lot of teammates that already had already played Europe a lot mm-hmm. of years, mm-hmm. um, big players here in Switzerland, and and you know they taught me also this 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 how how they do this. You know how to transform the pressure mm-hmm. to to joy. You know to take everything like easy. Um, it's just a game. You know. Yeah. yeah. Y- and you're doing what you love in front of a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Bro, enjoy it, man. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. nice to play football in front of Absolutely. so many people. And Absolutely. you know, if if you don't win, you just you just don't win. You know, but if you do everything. Um, then you just have to be happy. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So yeah, coming back to Saint Gallen, what year was that when you came back? I came back two thousand last 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 year. Um, nice. Two thousand? No, no, no. Two thousand twenty-one in okay. January. Okay. In, no. 2022 sorry my mm-hmm. bad no worries yeah so you know obviously one of the biggest fan bases in, in Switzerland biggest club in the region how has that been have the fans welcomed you really nice and I, I didn't expect this because I, I, I didn't know this from the, from b- before I came here um, I realized only when I played my first game here um, first game first game of the season it was full and I was like wow man this is this is uh, this this is nice man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know the stadium has a capacity of um, almost twenty thousand, wow. and um, last season we had an average of seventeen thousand. Wow. Even even though in, in, in winter it's mm. really cold here, mm. like it's minus mm. degrees, and 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 you know fans come and come and come, and, mm. and also the um, the people that uh, the board members of the club they do really good because we also go and train not only here but in preseason we go in in different parts of the region mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so we yeah so the commitment is bigger mm. and you know and this um like the work between the club and the region is really mm-hmm, is really good mm-hmm. yeah, yeah that's awesome this though. helps a lot yeah that's awesome so you know w- was that w- kind of a first experience you know you know playing in front of such loyal fans i mean obviously i don't want to say it on youtube they might you know flag it but during that period where there weren't fans in the stadium, uh, did you notice a difference in how you felt and and, and the playing? Um, yes, of course, of course. Um, I was also really lucky enough to to live it from from really young already. Mm. Like in Kansas City, also the fan base was, mm. was is really mm. really good. Mm. But for example, when I went on loan, the first year I think it was like I don't know four hundred mm. people mm. watching mm. the game, and and and, and it changes a lot. Yeah, it changes a lot. Yeah, yeah. And the motivation and you know that you're playing for them and they are they are um, they are behind you and mm-hmm, you really mm-hmm, feel this atmosphere mm-hmm, and um, this for me is really big now if I had to change this and going back to play in front of 400 I think it would be difficult for me absolutely, for example in, in, in COVID time mm-hmm, mm-hmm. where the stadiums were empty mm. we didn't play so good in the championship because of this exactly, yeah, 100%, exactly. 100%. so s- sometimes they say it in football you know the, the the crowd is your you know your 12th man it is man yeah you feel that yeah. away from home it is man yeah, yeah, yeah. it is and um, as I said here, playing in an empty stadium, it was uh, yeah, it was yeah. one of our worst season out of five mm. that I've been here. Mm. It was the wor- the worst season. Mm. 
COVID season mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, because of the fans. Mm. Yeah, so, so with that being said, obviously talking about the good and the benefits, obviously there comes the negatives and the cons uh, to having a big fan base and you know maybe louder fans. Have you ever been criticized by the fans, by the media? A lot, man. A lot. Yeah, every, every, every game, you know, if, if you don't play good in the media, um, here is not so hard as um, in Spain, for yeah, example. Yeah. But they, they talk, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they talk, and if you lose or you don't play good, yeah. man, they, they, can, they can really talk back. Yeah, and yeah. you cannot react because you just have to accept it. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, I remember, you know, I, I, now I can speak uh, German and I can yeah, read yeah. it. But um, at the beginning, my, my girlfriend was coming in, um, the first, in the first year. She yeah. would tell me, hey, did you read this? No, um, I don't like this, what, you, yeah, what, yeah, they, yeah. what they wrote. And then she told me, yeah, they wrote this and that and this and that. And I was like, yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to know anything. Yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't care. Yeah, Am yeah. I doing everything t- in order to play good? Yes. Then, okay, I'm happy. Exactly, exactly. And people, people are going to talk when we yeah. are public, public persons. You know, people are going to mm, talk and, mm, and mm. in sports, whereas in sports, in social media. And, and yeah, people get to comment. Exactly. And you just have to accept it. Yeah, yeah. Like we said before, man, it's easy to be in comfort and criticize people in discomfort. <laughs> exactly. It's easy to be in the warmth, typing on your computer in front of the screen about Jordy. It's easy to be in a nice warm coat, talking on the mic. So yeah, uh, you know, you told me you respect what I do. I, I really respect what you do. Thank so, you so much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like you said, you know, deal, dealing with the, with the criticism and the media, uh, just acceptance. And that's actually something, you know, I want to bring up real quick. In terms of the mental uh, aspect, I think it helps also for yourself like you're gonna have you're gonna have negative thoughts you're gonna have positive thoughts and, and I think the ability to accept is kind of what 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 sets you free yeah. you know hundred percent and these also this also helped me to meditate you, you just you just you don't judge you know and, and exactly. the fact of not judging the circumstances and the situation where you're at helps you to accept and yeah. then if you accept then you just um, take things easier yeah, and yeah. Um, whereas in football or with your wife or with your pet or with your kid exactly. um, or with your friends yeah. um, and if you accept it then you just you just try to improve and you just mm. try to you know talk better and mm. respect the other and mm. it's just, just about this man and absolutely. then you're just happy just yeah, more yeah. happy if you do this absolutely yeah, yeah and, and that's why meditation is so tough I'm sure you've gotten it if you've given the advice how do you meditate oh it's so hard I'm, I think of this I think of that that's what meditation is you yeah. just sit there you accept the thoughts. Exactly, bro. You have that monkey mind. You exactly. have that monkey brain. Yeah. We all have thoughts. Yeah. But it's about accepting it, being okay with it, and like I always try to say, not reacting to yeah. the stressor. Like you said, no also with the media. Yeah. 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 No judgment. Exactly. I love it, bro. Yeah. I love it, man. Thanks so much, man. <laughs> yeah. So you know, take us into you know where you're at now, uh, how you're feeling, how, how things have been here. Um, I'm always wanting to improve. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm 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 gonna be 30 years old in October. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, you know the the three um, of 30, you yeah, know, yeah, scares yeah, me a little yeah. bit. You know, it's you it's look good, always, brother. Yeah, thanks so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, a lot of people say, yeah, when you're in your 30s, you may think already, yeah, what what's next, mm, you know. Mm. But I, I feel fit. I want. I still want to win. You know. Um. I still have two year contract here. And um. Yeah. Just. Just take it day by day. Mm, I just mm, take mm. it day by day. For sure. For because sure. I don't know what comes tomorrow. Maybe the coach calls me in Can- like in yeah. Kansas City yeah. and tells me you have to, you have to leave. Mm, mm. So I just take it day by day, for and sure. that's what helped me ever since. For sure. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I want to dive into you know a little bit of how you, how you treat yourself individually. You know, you've told us how hard of a worker you are, how disciplined. I want to get into a little some specifics before we. You know, come to an end of the you know conversation. Uh, you know, it's getting late. I know you have a son, you got a wife, so we don't want to keep you. But uh, you know, like I said, all all your stuff's been really, really helpful. And um, you know, I think if you could give us, you know, a couple of the most important habits, the important things that you've taken throughout your career. Now you're going to be 30. You know, you've had massive experience all over the world, best academy in the world. So I'm sure you've tried a lot of things. You've thrown a lot of things away. You've kept some things, and and that's how I think it is. Um, you know, I was talking with some guy yesterday. It's about trying things, seeing what works for you, keeping those things, trying other things. If it doesn't work, you throw it away. So, what are the most important habits that you've kept on board? Um, what have you implemented that have that have helped you stay at this level, continue to rise? Nice question, man. Um, I think the fact of um, doing more. Uh, 
than any other than any other else than anybody else yeah. um in in football in my in my prof in my job i just want to do more every day and i i'm open to improve every mm, day mm. and i'm not my habit is not being happy or not being um how do you say how yeah satisfied not being satisfied of what you have accomplished so far mm -hmm, mm -hmm. why because you you have to want more and i think the an athlete mentality is this you accomplish something but you just have to want more exactly, and it, exactly. in 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 order of wanting more you just also want to um, improve your habits every day and you know we're not perfect but you have to have your your daily routine exactly your habits and and you also have to be open to improve and to to you know take in things like you said and take out things that maybe they don't mm, help you mm, and mm. you know just being open um, mm. in order to improve yourself daily absolutely absolutely yeah what i get from that and and the key takeaway for me is number one never satisfied you yeah. know yes, you've done big things in your in yeah. your career it's okay to clap yourself and, and be happy about the milestones yeah. and rewards. Like you said, go out sometimes, have, have, have a couple beers, have an ice cream, have a brownie sundae. But next day, you got to get back on track. You can't let it slide away because it's, it's so much harder to develop and keep a habit than lose a habit. Yeah. So I think that's number one. And then, you know, number two is that self-growth mindset, you know, and, and, and you know, You've had it since you were, you know, playing at, at, at La Masaya, uh, obviously even younger, and you continue to develop it. And I think, you know, that that mindset of no matter who you are, where you are, how much money you have, where you're playing, you can always learn more. Yeah. You know, so I, I think that that self growth mindset and being curious for knowledge is a massive way to become a top player like yourself and grow in other areas of your life relationships business uh keeping you know connections stuff like that it's nice that you put in words because um because I, it's one to one of, of mm, what mm, i of what mm, i think mm. and um it's just not improving on the field it's just in your life man absolutely, absolutely. Rela relationships you know yeah. meeting new people yeah, yeah. Um, respecting what they do yeah, yeah. Um, just giving everything of what yeah, you have yeah. um and just improving my, your mindset every day mm -hmm, and, and, mm -hmm. and, and I think only because of this you're gonna get you're gonna get as I said many times you're gonna get maybe not at your top 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 but you're gonna be really close to it absolutely yeah you and, reach your full potential yeah full potential man. Mm -hmm. full, and I, I think every one of us have to do it that's what that's what we're here for exactly in, on earth bro yeah yeah you you just have to reach your full potential exactly. because because you can do great things for yeah, for yeah, yourself yeah. and for everyone mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and if you reach mm -hmm. your full potential bro you you, you just yeah, you, 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 you feel so good and, exactly. and so happy exactly. and so, exactly. yeah. yeah. There's also something that I want to say is that all these years that I've been um, suffering, it took me now to a day where I enjoy a lot more working. You know, before it was a discipline, you know, it was hard. I had to wake up early mm -hmm. to go at mm -hmm. 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. training. It was not easy. Mm. But today I wake up early and then I say, wow, I go to train. And, and you know this all these years working a lot for sure this took me to a point where I enjoy training now a lot and I, I enjoy playing I enjoy mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know I enjoy winning I enjoy losing and I enjoy everything mm, that I mm, do mm. because of what I've been working on absolutely absolutely um, all these years yeah yeah I, I completely agree and, and I can second that I mean people might think I'm crazy but you know I'm sure you agree with your discipline and work ethic I like to suffer Exactly. You know? Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Because when you exactly. suffer, right. so, yeah. when you suffer and you put yourself in pain, yeah. yes, you know I, I get the situation. Some of my friends think I'm insane. Girls I date think I'm insane, but that's just me. Yes. You know what I mean? I can't relax if I don't suffer. Yes, yes. I can't relax if I'm not disciplined. Yes. So yeah, I mean that, and then I also want to touch on one other thing that you said. It's a cliche saying you only live one life, but these cliche sayings are cliche because they're true. And one thing, one guy, I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but one, one guy that, you know, he might be a bit over the top that I really love in, in the space is David Goggins. Okay. Uh, and basically he says something very similar, a little darker, but if you go to heaven and you didn't reach your full potential and, you know, God says to you, you know, why didn't you reach that? You don't, you don't want to say that you didn't give your, your, your all. You didn't want to give your full effort. 
So I think, like you said, when you're on this planet, you give everything, you influence others like you do, and uh, that's how you can look back at 90 and be truly satisfied. Or do you want to be sitting there, you know, and say, oh, I wish I did this, I wish I did that. Really nice, man. Yeah, yeah. It's just like this, man. Yeah, yeah, it's really yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah I, 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 <laughs> I I I'm I'm without words, man. Yeah, like yeah. it's it's just like this. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. like this. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, man. So 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 getting towards the end of the conversation, um, one question I do want to ask before we get to the quick fire questions, I think you know, relationships are very important, and then obviously you know, having a relationship with a woman is very important. You're married, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, obviously you've been been to many countries. I'm sure you've met many great women. Um, how how do you you know as a footballer people don't realize it's tough to keep the relationship you know you're 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 in a you're in a space where it's like trust me i get it i already know what you're saying to yourself here we go another guy in his sports jacket with a nice watch with a chain trying to sell me on his ebook trying to sell me on his course but no that's not me you know me i've posted thousands of pieces of free content across all social media 6000 to almost be exact and i've spent thousands of dollars to do that for you to help you for free now I'm launching the Rick Fit Academy app. I put 24 years of my effort playing a beautiful game into this app for you to help you become the best footballer possible. And it's not gonna cost you anything up front. You can get a seven day free trial, try out the app, and if you don't like the app, you cancel and then we'll never speak again. But I'm really sure that you'll love this app. I look forward to seeing you within the tribe. Have a fantastic one. You're, you know, it's indecisive. You know, I know for myself, when I get serious with a girl, I, I tell her, you know, I really like you. We can enjoy spending time together, but I might leave in six months. So I just want to warn you. So how, how do you, how did you deal with that? How, what kind of qualities did you look for in your wife? It's really nice that you asked this because, um, it's probably also some, some tema difficult to talk about. Exactly. But, but, but it's in our everyday lives, yeah, you know? Yeah. And, and that's, um, what, that's what I wanted to do here. I want to ask the difficult questions exactly. that people don't talk about. Because yeah. that's what people are really wondering. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I have, I have had um, three re relationships so mm, far. Mm. Um, three great women. Um, really, really intelligent, really respectful. The first one was my first love, mm, you know, mm. and, and you, you don't, I, I, I will not get this love again. Mm, 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 mm. And that's when I moved to France. And I told her, look, I'm gonna go to France. I would like you to come with me. Mm. You know, it, um, we were, uh, I was uh, 20, 21. Mm. You know, I, I wanted to live with her. I loved her. Mm. Then she told me, look, I'm gonna stay in Barcelona because I wanna find a job. I wanna start working. And I said, okay. But I was really, this touched me. This yeah. touched me a lot. Hurts. I was, yeah, it hurt me a lot, yeah, a lot. Yeah. And this got to a point where we end up the relationship, sadly, but it was like this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, what do I what do I seek in in, in my wife? Just um, respect for my job, um, and understanding, because a, a footballer's wife or an athlete's wife, she has to understand your job. Exactly. Exactly. She has she has to understand your routines. Exactly. She has to understand that you're gonna go to the gym in the morning even though you have a seven week baby. He, she has to understand that even if you have three weeks, um, mm -hmm. three weeks um, mm -hmm. holidays, mm -hmm. and your baby just is a newborn, you just go, gonna go to the gym. Mm -hmm. You're not mm -hmm. gonna be 24 seven with them, um, and you just want to improve. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a short life. Mm -hmm. Maybe I, I can play until, I don't know, 35, let's say, um, five years more, so mm -hmm. these five years more, mm -hmm. Um, football is my is my life man mm, yeah. and you know she's from here um, but at some point maybe we have to leave you know and, mm -hmm. and wives they have also to understand this they have to understand that maybe they leave their families mm. for a little bit of time they have to understand that they will be alone mm, mm. they will have to start new lives not just one maybe but many mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and if they have this then it's a why for you. Absolutely. Then it's Absolutely. the person for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the most beautiful. It's not the most, the tallest. It's not the thinnest. Mm -hmm. It's the one that respects, mm. uh, respects you mm. and your job the most. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And the one, yeah. And the one, like you said, the one who is willing to embark on the journey yeah. together, build something together. Yeah. 
and you know correct me if I'm wrong I always try to talk about this you know you seem like a you meditate you seem like a very present guy like I said very very well spoken um, so I can say for myself you know you're a busy man I'm a busy man but I think when, when we're with the people we care about we're not on our phone we're not in other things we're present and I think you know for honestly for the women watching you know you know if you have a guy who is, is, is focused on himself and then is, is present when he's with you and he only spends three, four hours a day, I think that's better than some guy who's on the phone drinking beers spending eight, ten hours a day because yeah. that's not really spending time. Yeah. So I, for me, that's the most valuable in, in a friend and in, in a girlfriend and eventually a wife. It's, it's, it's seeing that and seeing your strengths and how you are as a man. 100%, man. And I think also... Um, women that meet or date uh, an athlete and so so a passionate athlete this is also something that the women have has to think wow exactly. like, this guy is doing everything for what for what he loves exactly respect that man. Mm -hmm. respect mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. and you know I, I'm I'm I gonna I, I want to be with him yes because I I understand his his mm -hmm. job mm -hmm. and I'm gonna do everything that he will be successful as much as successful mm -hmm, as possible mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. I, I told my wife look now maybe you have to move soon um ha just help me every day in order to be my best um maybe we'll have to move here and there maybe mm. outside of europe mm. but after my career maybe we will leave for you mm -hmm, you can mm -hmm, decide whenever mm -hmm. whatever you want to leave mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you can decide whenever you want to be yeah but these years that i'm with you um this my professional years mm -hmm we live for me absolutely absolutely and then we live our experiences it's gonna be nice i swear i'm gonna do everything that you're happy but it's my life it's my mm, passion mm, please mm. let me live my passion absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah that's unbelievable and then i think it's a true test of the relationship 100 percent, 100 percent. it happened to me yeah first yeah. relationship yeah. it was my love the love yeah. of my life yeah it happened to me yeah exactly exactly it tests the relationship 100 percent bro yeah, and, and especially for the youngsters listening, I get a lot of questions about girls. That's why I wanted to ask it. You know, it's, um, you know, like, like Jordy said, the, the number one thing is, is finding a girl who finds your ambition and your passion attractive. Yeah. You know? Exactly. If you find, and not just for social media, mm -hmm. not just to post the Instagram stories, the TikToks, the Snapchats. No, someone who really mm -hmm. respects your passion and your ambition and your love. Because, you know, for me, you know, I've done a lot of studying in the dating space. I think it's very interesting. I think it relates a lot to football relationships. You know, when, when a girl sees that and, and respects that, you know, it, it goes back to the Stone Ages, to the Paleolithic times. Mm -hmm. You had one purpose mm -hmm. and it was to foster a family, pr protect, provide, mm -hmm. you know, and, and be that rock for the mm -hmm. relationship. Nice, man. Nice. So, yeah, nice. I appreciate you sharing that. I yeah. hope it didn't get too personal, but uh, yeah. No, it was nice. I, I, I like to be personal when, yeah, I, yeah. when I feel comfortable, you yeah, know, yeah, and, and yeah. I think it, it's, it's so much value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it's also interesting, you know. Yeah, and, um, yeah. I, nice what you said. No. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, nice, man. Yeah, yeah, brother. So let, let's just uh, hit a quick uh, quick question round, um, and then uh, we'll let you get off to your, to your lovely wife and, and your son. Quick fire round. Uh, Answer in as little or as many words as you want. Best player you've played with? Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> Best player you've played against? Steven Gerrard. Oh, oh. Favorite cheat meal? McFlurry. Wow. What, what, with what? Uh, M&M's. That's fire, bro. <laughs> crazy. Yeah. <man. laughs> Different. Crazy. <laughs> Different. <laughs> Favorite healthy food? <clears throat> I love the omelets that my mm. wife do. Wow. 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 What's Crazy. in there? Like filled about filled with um, vegetables. Nice. Yeah, I nice. Love that. Really nice. good. Different really level. Good. Yeah. Favorite travel destination you've been? Um uh, Mauritian Mauritius Islands. Mm. Mauritius Islands. Where's that? Africa. Oh, okay. Africa. Okay. Wow. Yeah. wow. Mauritius Islands. Yeah. Wow. What's over really there? Nice. Nothing, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I'm American. I'm geography. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's uh, it's uh, just vacation time. Yeah. Chill, nice. chill. Nice. You can nice. do a lot of things. Um, there's also mountains. You can mm. um, do a 
hiking and stuff. Mm. We mm. went there just 10 days and mm-hmm. I was on mm-hmm. the beach and I, I enjoyed it a lot. Mm. Mauritius Islands. Yeah. Love it, bro. Yeah. Love it. And, you know, dream travel destination. Any any places you want to go? Mm. I don't have any dream travel destination, but I would like to go to Africa mm. to uh, to do some projects. Actually, last last That's summer, awesome, yeah, yeah, last summer I had to go. Um, it was cancelled due to a war in mm. Togo. Mm. Um, but this was my this is my dream travel destination. Wow, yeah, yeah, wow. In Togo. What type of projects? Are um, to do fountains, water fountains. Wow, yeah, wow, yeah. wow. Amazing. Provide clean water. Yes, yeah, yeah. amazing for That's the whole awesome. village. That's awesome. Amazing. That's yeah, awesome. there's a there's a um, uh, foundation here in um, in Switzerland. Mm. There are Swiss people mm. that they do projects in Togo, and then and then this was the project last summer. So hopefully I, w- I will do it mm. soon mm. enough. Yeah, yeah. it's awesome. Not, it's awesome. my dream. Yeah, yeah I yeah. love it. Just shows how good of a guy you are. Really. Thank you, man. Yeah, appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah, man. I, I think this has been an unbelievable podcast. I appreciate you really coming much. on. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's been a great conversation. You know, I talk a lot, so. No, yeah, yeah, me too, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, but I feel comfortable. No, normally yeah. I don't talk so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked it, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it been was great, nice, man. Yeah, it's been it was, great. It was so, nice. anything you want to leave the audience off with? If they want to follow you on social media, where to find you? It's okay. I it, I don't need any followers. Um, yeah. I just need um, love for Eric. Um, he does he does it really good, and I enjoyed a lot. So. Uh, Hopefully, see you soon, guys. Thank you so Thank much, you. bro. Appreciate it. It's been great. It's been great. Yeah, yeah. Nice, man. Wow, that was incredible. Thank you. Thank I, you. I love those conversations. <laughs> really. It's nice. Yeah, yeah.